tell me now the difference in this team, how have they improved since last year? More physically or more in their attitude? Probably a little of both. We're stronger and more physical running the football by a long shot. And, and we come into this game not answer, having to answer any questions for an entire month. A lot lot more positive uh, attitude. We're, we're excited. Can't wait. I know you're ready to get it started, so... Thunder and Lightning ready to go? Yeah, we're ready. We're full full strength right now. He had a heck of a finish to this week. We're going to count on him some in this game. You're going to see him play. I know you've talked a lot about being able to prove it on the field. Now you've got your chance. Are you and the USC Trojans ready? Hey, this is a great opportunity. This is all we ever wanted right here. We've worked like crazy. This is the night. Let's get it done. Good luck, Coach. All right, see ya. That says it all. Let's get it done. It's a Chamber of Commerce dream in South Florida tonight. It is a beautiful night at Pro Players Stadium. 69 degrees, clear skies. The winds that have been strong for much of the last week have died down and dwindled to just a breeze. So 12-0 and 12-0. And, and as John Saunders mentioned, unfinished business. That's been Oklahoma's mantra all season long. Let's finish. And for USC, let's get a chance to finish. Both teams getting ready to start to finish what they started a year ago. The series record... Between the two teams, USC leads five wins, two losses, a draw. Trojans have won the last four. Yeah, but at this point... That doesn't matter. That doesn't mean a thing. The last time they met as number one and number two was 1981. And most of these kids weren't even around then. That's Reggie Bush. We talked about him, how dangerous he is as a kick returner, a punt returner, a receiver. And out of the backfield. He waits on Garrett Hartley's kick. So amid all the flashbulbs, all the talk about number one and number two back in August. And out here, it's 05. And we're about three and a half hours from finding out who's going to be the BCS national champion. From the Orange Bowl underway. Trying to keep it out of Bush's hands, and in doing so, kick it out of bounds. So great field position for USC to start things. That means number 11, Matt Leiter. As we take a look at the Heisman Trophy winner, his numbers, 28 touchdowns, only six interceptions, 67% completion. And partner, maybe more than that, 24 and 1 as a starter. Uh, exactly. He's a winner. Uh, you know, they, they wondered when Carson Palmer left, oh, man, who, who's going to replace Carson Palmer, our Heisman Trophy winner? Well, he's went, as you said, 24 and 1 since he's taken over. So they'll start from their own 35. The Trojans send five wide receivers out with an empty backfield on the first play of the game. Pete Carroll might go long. Who knows? Quick slant, Reggie Bush, first down at midfield, here he goes. Inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. A pickup of 28 on the first play of the game. And already the Trojan fans have something to cheer about. Let's take a look at our FedEx starting lineups. Here's the big fellas up front. Baker at tackle, Drake, Khalil, Matua, and Latui. The backs and receivers, Jarrett and Smith, the wideouts, Holmes, the tight end, Dominique Bird, will play a lot of tight end as well. Thunder and lightning is Lendell White and Reggie Bush. Lee Webb is the fullback. First down, USC. After one play, they're at the 38 of the Trojans. Now it's Reggie Bush on the handoff. And USC going to lose yardage there. The Sooners are waiting for him, led by Dan Cody. And there is their fired-up defensive end. Defensively up front, Cody's an all-conference performer. Jonathan Jackson on the other side with Magruder and Pendleton, the tackles. The linebackers back after missing most of last year with the knee injuries. Lance Mitchell, he's the leader. Ingram and Alexander flank him. The secondary, there's a rookie back there and Marcus Walker, Poole, Shelby, and Nicholson. Antonio Perkins back now, and they're playing better pass defense since he returned from an injury. Second down and 14. Liner, quick drop, throw over the middle, and broken up by Rufus Alexander, intended for the tight end, Alex Holmes. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. USC offensively, this is out of 117 Division I. Look over here defensively how good Oklahoma defensively is. USC offensively is good, but they are not that outstanding as we mentioned in the opening 
The offensive line and the receivers are young and inexperienced. When you talk about Oklahoma's defense, you talk about how they become on third down. Here's the, a third and long. They, they are attacking. They are aggressive. They turn into something that they don't, they don't play on first and second downs. At the 42 of the Sooners. Here comes some pressure. The throw is incomplete. Intended on a slant across the middle for Jason Mitchell. And it's broken up by the Sooners. So the big play to Reggie Bush accounts for nothing. And the Trojans will have to give it up. And Norm Chow, the offensive coordinator, they all told us when we were out in at, at Southern California, they said, we have got to stay out of third and long. And there's Norm with his hand to his head with the pencil. They've got this figured out, but they said we've got to stay out of a lot of third and long. Antonio Perkins waiting on Malone's punt. Malone stands at his own 45-yard line. Remember, Perkins eight times in his career has taken it to the barn on punt returns. High wobbly kick. He's going to have to fair catch this one and does at about the eight-yard line. So a nice job by the USC punter to knock Oklahoma inside their own 10-yard line, and that's where now the Sooners will go to work offensively, and they'll do so with last year's Heisman Trophy winning quarterback in Jason White, the six-year senior at age 24. Some of his numbers grease even better than a year ago, really. Well, they are, and uh, you know, that's some of the Heisman Trophy winners in the past had better years, but yet didn't win it, and that's the case with Jason White. Jason said, Last year, we won almost all the individual awards you could win, and we have nothing to show for it. He was talking about the ADT Championship Trophy. Tonight, he gets his shot. First down, but deep in his own territory. And it's the freshman Peterson hitting the backfield, and he lost a yard. The ball is loose, but it was blown dead. Matt Grudegood was the guy that made the stop on Adrian Peterson. The FedEx starting lineups. Here's the big eaters up front, and this as a group might be as good as there is. Sims, Shashan, Carter, a finalist for the Remington Award. Davin Joseph, so talented a guard. Jamal Brown won the Outland Trophy. Adrian Peterson runs behind J.D. Runnels. James Bubba Moses is a tight end, and here's the receiving group that Bob talked about. Clayton and Jones and Wilson and Peoples and Bradley, they'll all see a lot of time for Chuck Long, the offensive coordinator who's done a great job at OU. Second down and 10, no gain on the first play. Here's White on play action, throwing and completing it out across the 25 to the 26 of first down to Will Peoples. So now the Sooners have some room to work against this USC defense. Up front, Rucker and Jackson on the ends. Patterson and Cody are both All-Americans inside at tackles. Boy, you talk about some great linebackers, and Todd talked about Lofa Tutupu with Matt Grudegood, who made the first tackle of the game. Dallas Sartz, the other outside linebacker. Justin Wyatt, Darnell Bing, Jason Leach, and Eric Wright in the secondary, and Wright's a guy that they might want to pick on because he, too, is a freshman. First down, Oklahoma. Here's the pitch on the counter. Peterson got a block across the 30. Puts his head down in cartwheels for about nine. Jason Leach knocked him off his pins, but the best run so far by the 19-year-old freshman. As we take a look at the tail of the tape, yeah, this is going the other way. Yeah, this is strength against strength. Off offense for Oklahoma and defense for USC, especially when you get down here on sacks and third down conversions. Look at this. They're pretty good, both of them. There's a lot of single digits there, partner. Yeah, yeah they're, they're right at the top. Uh, this is going to be a great matchup. Second down and just a yard after Peterson got nine. He'll get the handle again. Puts his head down. Should have the first down as he appears to have crossed our first down line there. Eric Wright made the tackle. And they're going to move the chains. First down for Adrian Peterson, a pickup of two. Peterson led the country in rushing attempts. Coming in, he had 314. And he was the number two rusher, 1843, his yardage coming in. And he is the first guy that Pete Carroll and that defense of USC want to take away. They want to take away the run and force the Heisman Trophy winner to throw <laughs> to all those good receivers that he's got. That seems a little crazy, yeah. doesn't it? Might have a throw here out of the shotgun. First down. Four wide outs for Jason White. No, they'll keep it on the ground. The handoff inside. Peterson can't get anything going. Drew to good and Sarch, the linebackers, on the stop. Drew to good, the captain. One of the captains defensively. 
Only 5'11", but a guy that at the next level, who knows, might end up being a safety. Yeah, I think he's going to be along the same lines as Troy Polamalu, who was a linebacker, and now it plays strong safety for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So Troy was playing in this game two years ago in the win over Iowa in the Orange Bowl for USC, and now he's an all-pro in the NFL. Pick up of two for Adrian Peterson. Looks like Jason White changes things up on second down and eight. Peterson, oh man, did he get met in the hole that time? Wow. Sarts is the guy that brings him down eventually, but Lofa Tatupu and Dallas Sarts were both there to meet him in the hole. <laughs> this defensive line, Patterson and Cody inside, and then those two linebackers, Grudegood and Tatupu behind them. They are outstanding. Watch the lick from behind Adrian Peterson. This is what he sees. Kapow, right there. You're right. Patterson's the guy that got him low and then helped from everybody. Kewan Jones checks in. Out of the shotgun again. Jason White, plenty of time. Now he pulls it down. Throws on the run. Got a man open across the middle. Travis Wilson still on his feet, and he's down in USC territory at the 42-yard line. Well, when you want to try to stop the run, and you commit eight guys to the run, there is single coverage in the secondary. Good coverage initially, but this is something that Jason White and his improved health this year with his two knees ha has done better. He has scrambled around to give some opportunities for his receivers who might be covered initially to get open right in the middle of the field. So this is the first dance for the Sooners into USC territory, and their coach is loving it. First down just inside the Trojan 42. Jason White, quick drop, slant high, intended for Bradley. Got his hands on it, but it's incomplete. Justin Wyatt was covering. Mark Bradley, a guy that's been getting more and more dangerous as the season's gone along. Started off his career as a defensive back at OU. And now one of their top wide receivers. I yeah. think uh, Mr. Is, Mr. Versatility. Oh, he has really improved over the course of the year. In fact, he's got seven touchdowns on the year, and he's caught all seven of those in the last half. The last six games produced seven touchdowns for Bradley. He comes out to the near side. On second down, Adrian Peterson. Again, a lot of cardinal and gold. As Peterson stopped after a short gain, Lofa Tatupu made the stop. Adrian Peterson, the fastest freshman ever to 1,000 yards rushing. 11 100-plus games. Only once didn't he have 100. And against ranked teams, and we saw a couple of the ranked teams he played, sensational. Both of these running backs, Peterson and Reggie Bush, have excelled against the best competition. But he's on the sideline now because Kiwan Jones comes in and passes downs. And this is a third and eight. Tenth play of the Sooner drive. White with pressure this time. Steps up, throws, got a man, and it's Bradley down the sideline. Bradley tiptoeing and lost the football in the end zone. I don't know if he was out of bounds or not. Yes, they're, they're marking it out of bounds. We'll see. They've got it spotted at the seven-yard line. The guy we just talked about, Mark Bradley, out of bounds at the seven, first and goal. And he ran our camera guy over. <laughs> You'll get a different look at it from here. <laughs> This play was made by the quarterback White just buying some time and allowing Bradley to get open. And then a great throw. There's where you see him go out. And our guys take a charge now and again. Uh, he just <laughs> barely stepped out before the ball came out. First and goal for the Sooners. Earliest opportunity to put points on the board for either team. Kiwan Jones inside handoff. And he gets to the five. As Tatupu in on another stop. Kiwan Jones, the guy that could probably start for any college team in the country. He was their leading rusher last year with almost 1,000. Kiwan, a junior out of Tulsa. He, go, he goes out and Peterson comes back in now. Yeah, they don't do a lot of throwing with Peterson or to Peterson. That doesn't say that they won't throw in this. They may, they may, but most of the time when they're going to pass the ball, Kiwan Jones is in the ball game. Wilson and Clayton to the near side. Jones wide to the left, and that's Clayton in motion on second and goal. Here comes a blitz. 
Play action. Right to the end zone. Touchdown. Travis Wilson from five yards from Jason White. What a drive to open things up for Oklahoma. That's just a great drive. More than what? Was it 90 yards? About 92. 92. Hartley for the point after out of a Mark Bradley hold. And the extra point is up and good. Pete Carroll squinting a bit. Bob Stoops couldn't have asked for more. Jason White, here comes touchdown pass number 34 of the year in the biggest game of the year. Sooners coach is loving it. 7 0 Oklahoma. Bob, you can't engineer it much better than that. Well, drive. it was a great opening drive for Oklahoma, and especially White. Watch the play here. These linebackers are going to blitz. Grudegood, number six, is going to be right at his feet when he throws the ball. And how he fits this ball in right between them. Big plays on the drive. Twice, right to, twice to Wilson, once on third and long. Yeah, two on third and long. Wilson was one for 20 yards. Bradley, another one for 32 yards. Converting third downs, a big part of that drive. Watch out for number five. Last time they tried to keep it out of his hands and they kicked it out of bounds and USC started at its own 35. Let's see what they do this time. Hartley to kick. Reggie Bush should get a shot at this one from the seven. And out to about the 24. A 19 yard return. So now it's time for the Heisman Trophy winner to play from behind. Matt Leinart and the Trojans set to take to the field. Number one ranked, but right now they trail number two, Oklahoma, by seven. The FedEx Orange Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive presentation brought to you by FedEx. Proud sponsor of the BCS. Go air, go ground, go football. Dodge, you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. The Home Depot, you can do it, we can help. And Budweiser, the bright color and crisp clean taste you'll only find in the King of Beers. Everybody in Pro Player Stadium having fun, why not? Picture perfect night. Lindell White, ironically, during our timeout was out on the field for USC. I guess they just wanted to give OU a little look because he just came off. Well, they may have changed the play call, too. Uh, sometimes uh, they'll leave him in there to fool the defense, and sometimes they'll change their mind on what play they want. Play action for Lennon. Down the middle on first down, and complete to Jarrett, the freshman. And it's across the 35 to the 36, a pickup of 11. And how far has this kid come over the course of the year? Well, coast to coast. He's come. He sure has from New <laughs> Brunswick, New Jersey. He's the guy now that is the Mike Williams of last year. Yeah, he's a true freshman. They've got a bunch of young players, freshmen and sophomores in the skill positions, playing along with Matt Leiner. First down at the 37. Here's the give to Reggie Bush. And he slipped and went down. Nice force by Rufus Alexander, the outside linebacker, but Reggie did that one himself. Well, USC came out and threw on first down, and that's what we were told they were going to do, try to be more aggressive and, and do things on first and second down. And like I said, try to stay away from the third and longs where Oklahoma really comes alive. I saw Norm about five minutes before the kickoff. I said, good luck, coach. Have fun. He said, have what? I said, have fun. And he held his stomach as if he had bad chili. <laughs> Second down at 10. He said that to the wrong guy. Yeah. He's working. Oklahoma crowd comes to life. And whistles stop play here. Let's see if they ran out of time. And now the referee separating a couple of guys in the USC backfield. 
Pendleton and Matua were the guys going at it. Here's Steve Shaw. Dead ball. Delay of game. Number 11 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. So that noise may have had something to do with it. Matt Leinart doesn't get the play off in time and that'll back him up to a second down at 15. Well a lot of times the play doesn't get in and you don't get out of the huddle in, in time. Sometimes you get up the line of scrimmage and you try and check off. Just another thing for Matt Leinart to, to pick up and be a little bit sharper on. Two tight ends in there right now and Dominic Bird comes out as a wide receiver on the left side. Now he's a slot man actually on second and 15. Leinart Plenty of time. Throws Reggie Bush in the flat, but there's two Sooners waiting for him. And Antonio Perkins and Broadney Poole with a couple of form tackles over there. That was two on one, though. That's what Reggie's going to tell him. <laughs> there might be a lot of that on Reggie tonight. Yeah. I think they want to get at least two guys on it. Everybody we talked to Oklahoma-wise, they respected what Reggie could do. And Bob Stoops says, hey, if he's a at wide receiver, he's a great wide receiver. And if he's at the back in the backfield, he's a great running back. That's the way we're going to treat him. Third down and long again. And we told you what Oklahoma's defense has done on third down and long this year. Here comes the pressure. Matt Leinert rolls. Pressure from behind. Oh, man, did he throw a shot? out near midfield and he got it to Steve Smith great throw on third and 11 liner to Smith for 14 Steve, that one that one couldn't get there fast enough for that, that's true Steve Smith is the motion man going to come down and go across the field liner kind of rolls out a little bit and Smith makes a nice catch he missed the first five games of the year with a broken leg a slight break in his leg Poole brings him down, but it's still a first down. Right near midfield. Now play action. Liner lofts one out. Got him inside the 35 to the 33 to the tight end, Bird. First down passing, Dominic Bird. He's a really a real good receiving tight end. That's his 35th catch of the year, and he likewise missed four games with some injury problems, so that tells you how prolific he is as a pass-catching tight end. Leinert went with Bird crossing even though he had a man that was going deep down the field that had a couple steps on Perkins. So now the Trojans have something working. Down to the 33 of the centers first down. Reggie Bush comes out as a receiver leaving David Kirkman in the backfield. Leinert rolls throws deep got a man touchdown. What a great catch. Dominic Bird flies high. Three yards. Bird has one for 17, one for 33, and we're a point away from a tie game. Extra point coming up. Just like that, the top ranked Trojans. Ryan Colleen in for the point after to try to make it even at seven. And the Sooners jump offside. Or so it appeared. Flags down. Look to be the left side of the front wall of Oklahoma that fell into the neutral zone before the snap. But the officials will sort it out. Here's a call. Dead ball foul, false start, number 69 on the offense, five-yard penalty, and we will have the try. So it was on USC, not on Oklahoma. Drawn offside. Dominic Bird, a happy tight end. That's his third touchdown catch of the year. And now Colleen has got a little more difficult task at hand for his extra point. The kick is up, and it's good. It didn't take long. A little over three minutes to go 75 yards, and the Heisman Trophy winner tosses his 29th touchdown pass. On the other end, a bird of prey. Dominique Bird, what a catch. Tie game, first quarter of the 71st FedEx Orange Bowl.
watching the FedEx Orange Bowl on ABC Sports. Welcome back to the FedEx Orange Bowl. Bob, here's the touchdown pass. Here are the two safeties. They're going to split to the halves of the field. Right here is Bird going to go straight down the middle, and he does it against Alexander, number 42. Coverage by a linebacker. Look at this throw right over the top. Lays it in, and that is just a great catch. He had two of these against Oregon State in the fog. Remember that game? We did the Washington State game in the following week against Oregon State. He made one so similar to that. That's where he had his other two touchdown catches before tonight. Do you see how he kind of slowed up to allow the ball to get there and shield the linebacker so they allow the ball to get to him? And for Oklahoma's defense, that's the first touchdown they've allowed in the last 39 possessions. That goes way back to the fourth quarter of the Texas A&M game. November 6th. I tell you what, that's a big drive. Answering right off the right off the bat. Line drive kick by Colleen. Gonna be fielded by Travis Wilson at the five. Travis Scott across the 30. Flag's probably gonna bring back a nice run back out to the 38-yard line. 34-yard kick return, but that flag thrown in the vicinity of one that's gonna bring it back, and they'll be back inside their own 20 instead. This is a Southeastern Conference crew. Steve Shaw working his second national championship. And he's got the call coming up for us right now. During the return, holding number 48 on the receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first and 10. So Bob Stoops, who just seems like about five minutes ago, was clapping his hands euphoric over his team's touchdown now saw USC go 75 yards to tie it. Our aerial coverage is courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships, reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new Assurance Tires, giving us great shots on a beautiful night in South Florida. And that penalty cost Oklahoma 23 yards. That's like hidden yards from where they would have had it. So they work from their own 15. Quick throw, completes. And spinning out across the 21 where he got hammered is Brandon Jones. Tell you what, this UCF, USC defense is being really physical. Don't be surprised to see some balls start popping out. The Trojans were first in the Pac-10 and ninth in the country in turnover ratio, plus 14. So they popped out a few against everybody they played. Second and four, Adrian Peterson. Collard. And brought down. Nice tackle. Lofa Tatupu. How many times have I called his name already? Remember, back in 74, his daddy, Mosi Tatupu, was part of a USC team that shared a national title. And now here he is. He says, if I can win a national title, dad's getting that ring. <laughs> well, he's a transfer from Maine. He started out going to school up in, in, the, in the east and came all the way across the nation to play middle linebacker for SC. Adrian Peterson starting off slowly so far. Only 16 yards on the ground. Kewan Jones in there right now because Jason White's in the shotgun. White gets protection, throws, almost intercepted. And Matt Grudegood had his hands on it. Grudegood leads the Trojans in interceptions with four. And like we say, he was a quarterback in high school, defensive back, now he's a linebacker, so he knows how to play the ball and read coverage. So not only did the Trojans offense do its job and get a touchdown to tie it, the defense comes to life and forces a Blake Ferguson punt. And then you've got to worry about who's on the other end, and that's Reggie Bush. Sooners look like they were a man shy on their punt team. Well, this is a spread punt. Ferguson, nice kick, but Reggie Bush is going to have a chance from the 27. Got by the first man, not quite actually, but Travis Wilson made a great open field tackle. A 51-yard punt, but only a six-yard return. And we've got a lot of Oklahoma fans here at Pro Players Stadium, and we've got them all over the world tonight watching from as far oh, away as Sergeant Major Ricky Purden. I'm from Muskogee, Oklahoma. We're with the 2nd Brigade Blackjack Brigade from 1st Cavalry Division. We're stationed in Mamadiya, Iraq. We're here to celebrate the Sooners. Go you, B U S D, Boomer! Boomer! 
let's take a look at our dive defensive playbook. Gap control is what Pete Carroll wants. He wants these gaps. Everybody's in a gap. Watch the two linebackers. They're going to come up late and get in those gaps right there where the ball carry. See that big hole there? Now watch the two linebackers. They both come up and fill gap control where there is no running lanes for Oklahoma. You talked about Pete Carroll's troops wanting to stop Adrian Peterson. They have stopped Adrian Peterson, that's for sure. Only 18 yards on the ground. The total yardage virtually even, though. And now the Trojans have scored on a 75-yard touchdown march the last time they had it. We'll start just inside their own 34-yard line. And Lendell White is in the backfield. Been nursing a high ankle sprain since the UCLA game. He gets the call. Slashing off the right side. That ankle feels pretty good right now. Oh, yes. Dante Nicholson made the tackle, but Lindell almost ran him over. A pickup of 10. Lindell White had some good practices the last few days. Earlier in the week when he got down to South Florida, he didn't practice hardly at all. Their concern is that he's not in shape. I don't think you're going to see him in for a lot of plays in, 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 in succession. Comes out there, gets a glad hand from the coaches and his teammates and, and got his team a first down. If he can do that, just play, you know, just play sporadically. Give us a break. Give us some help. Now it's Reggie Bush in the backfield. Three wide outs for Matt Leiner. Draw play to Bush. In a lot of traffic, and the Sooners aren't going to let him go. Rodney Poole from his safety spot helps out on the tackle. Well, you can tell that these two teams know where number 28 and number 5 are at all times. So a loss of about a yard, second down and 11 coming up. We've got 147 and the clock winding in the first quarter. Tie game in the 71st FedEx Orange Bowl between number 1 and number 2. Here comes the noise again from the Oklahoma fans. Leinert, nice play fake. Matt's got pressure, and it's swatted away. Clint Ingram, the outside linebacker, came in along with Lance Mitchell, the middleman, and Ingram got a hand on it. They had one of the backs blocking on the linebacker, and that's not going to get it. The fullback tries to block him. That's Webb, number 35, to the left of the screen. Doesn't do a very good job, and... And Ingram does a nice job of, of getting around and knocking the ball down. There was a receiver open downfield if he had time to get rid of it. Ingram, a junior out of Hallsville, Texas, comes up with a big defensive play and forces a third down and 11. And watch this blitz over here. Here they come. Leinert rolls away from it, has time, and throws complete. Going to be short of the first down, I think, at about the 48-yard line. He got it to Steve Smith, but it's a yard or two short as Rodney Poole makes the tackle. Let's check in with Swanee. Well, thank you, Brad. There are a lot of fans here from Oklahoma, but none maybe as, more, as famous as Toby Keith, country recording artist. You're a big fan of the Sooners, but they got you a little bit on the edge here, don't they? Well, it's 7-7, but it's a great atmosphere. National championship game, two great programs. You know how it is. Oklahoma and USC are two of the greatest, and it's exciting, man. A lot of hitting going on. There's a troop, some soldiers from Iraq that shouted out a hello to Oklahoma big fans. I know they're big fans of yours and your, your song, American Soldier. Yeah, we got some uh, troops in here tonight, but for all of them watching all over the world tonight, thank you for keeping it free for us, and everybody in America loves you guys. Okay, we'll watch a little more football. Right, Boomer Sooner. Malone to punt off the side of his foot, but it takes a great bounce. I mean, a great bounce. Inside the five, and now a fumble. Loose ball. Mark Bradley tried to pick it up. Penalty markers are down as well. We'll sort it all out here, so hold on. SC thinks they have possession. Bradley tried to scoop that ball up at the last minute. I'm not sure why Mark wanted to try to handle that thing. Obviously, didn't want it to go and drop down at the three-yard line, but with the crazy bounce it took, better to just keep your hands off it. You don't want to turn it over. And now the officials will sort it out and let us know just who has the football. Bob Brad, I believe if the USC player had touched the ball yes. before Oklahoma, it's dead. Yes. Bradley was taking the chance that he'd get the no ball back, back anyway. Play. Number 22 red did not hit in the back. During the play, there was a fumble. It was 
was recovered by USC. It will be first and goal. Trojans have the football. Well, I think that's what Swanee was talking about. Bradley thinks right there that the USC guy may have touched it. That means the, the receiving team can pick it up and, and, and run with it. And if you do fumble it, you still get possession of it. Obviously, it, it, doesn't, touched it. it doesn't hit USC. A huge well, break. The side judge was right on top of it. There was never a doubt in his mind, I yeah. don't think. And now USC with a golden opportunity to take the lead for the first time tonight. First and goal, Trojans at the Oklahoma six-yard line. Lendale White up the middle. Lendale White close in. Touchdown, USC. You couldn't have a fumble more costly. And the Trojans capitalized in just one play. USC in front for the first time tonight. Ryan Colleen for the point after. Low snap, handled well, and the extra point is good. So the Sooners shocked by the turn of events. 14 straight points now for USC. Lynn? Well, Bob Stoops is on the sidelines right now, signaling to the official. He wants to talk to him because I think he also believes that the Trojan player touched the ball. And we clearly saw in the replay he did not. But again, Bradley, I'm sure, thought that that player had touched the ball when he went around it. But unfortunately, I believe it was his block that pushed him away from the ball. And right there, Coach Stoops is trying to make the point to the official. The official is trying to explain to him he was right on top of it. He saw the whole thing. He made the right call. And Bob Stoops is doing what he needs to do as a head coach right now. Later on, when he looks at that, he'll realize that the official makes the right call. Well, it was maybe the length of a hand. That's how close it was. But what a way to go over 1,000 yards with a six-yard touchdown in one play. Lindell White over 1,000 yards on the season and into the end zone to give his team the lead. Mark Bradley, and you know that's still lingering inside that helmet, Bob. It's got to be tough, but he's just trying to make a play. And, you know, the players know the rules. Bob Stoops handle, handles the punt teams, the special teams, punt teams. And uh, you know he tells those players, if, if a punting player touches the ball, you can pick it up and go with it. And even if you fumble it, we get possession of it back where we have it. be interesting to see now Mark Bradley gets a handle on Colleen's kickoff. It appears he might from a yard deep. The guy that just fumbled on his way up the middle in a nice return out across the 25 to the 28 yard line. 28 yard kick return. This is the BCS National Championship game. It's the 71st FedEx Orange Bowl with Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and Todd Harris. I'm Brad Nessler. Nice to have you along with us from South Florida tonight. Two undefeated teams at 12 0, ranked 1 and 2 all season long. And now here on January 4th of 05. We find out who the best team is and who takes home the ADT championship trophy. Oklahoma drew first blood. They scored on a 92-yard march. Pete Carroll's Trojans 75 yards later tied it. And now that fumble turned into a six-yard touchdown. And the Trojans lead 14 to 7. And there is just no room to run so far for Adrian Peterson. Two yards on the carry. Got out to the 30. As the first quarter, I think we've got a flag on the field, though. Gonna say the first quarter is about to close, but let's hold on. Brad, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Jamal Brown was blocking like he normally does, driving his man to the ground. One of the FC players didn't like it, came Dead over. Ball. Personal foul, number 92 on the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. Manny Wright, good call, Swanee. We've talked about Jamal Brown. Sometimes he tries to take you into section 103 with his blocks. And one of the defensive linemen took offense. There's big number 55, the Atlin Trophy winner, 6'6", 313 pounder out of Lawton, Oklahoma, a two-time All-American. And boy, the National Football League is salivating, waiting for that kid. First quarter comes to a close. Boomer and
Kevin Sooner are looking on, but Traveler 7 has got the lead right now. The end of one at the 71st <laughs> FedEx Orange Bowl. Our presentation of the FedEx Orange Bowl will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. ABC Sports coverage of the FedEx Orange Bowl continues. Back to start the second quarter in the 71st FedEx Orange Bowl at Pro Player Stadium. I tell you what, there's a lot of different shades of red in this building tonight. <laughs> Crimson on one side, Cardinal on the other, depending on who you're cheering for. The end of the first quarter, USC on a touchdown and a turnover as Traveler 7 looks on. Their team leads by a score 14 to 7. And now it's Oklahoma with a first down at its own 45 yard line. They fake it to Peterson, Travis Wilson on the end of round. He got collared right about at midfield. Lofa Tatupu with the tackle again. Let's check in with Todd Harris. All right, thank you very much, Brad. The man standing next to me, a lot of people know him, Will Ferrell from Saturday Night Live and the movies. Little known, little known fact, he used to work for the USC Sports Information Department, but he's got a better story about this guy back here that was on Saturday Night Live with him. Fire away. Oh, yeah, I did a sketch with uh, Shaq back here where he uh, picked me up in his arms and cradled me and sang a song, No One's Gonna Hurt My Little Man. <laughs> so that's what we did, yeah. Trojans, big fan of an obviously your alumni of USC. Yes. Are you impressed how well they're playing tonight here in the first quarter now into the second? They're doing great, and uh, hopefully they can start running the ball a little bit more, and, and, and we'll see what happens. Good luck to you, Will. Bye, honey. I love you. All right, Bye, Will. Magnus. Hi, Suzanne. Hey, Mom. We watched, we watched Elf as a family during the Christmas holidays, and I just saw Anchorman the other day. I laughed out loud. I was on a plane. <laughs> people thought I was crazy. I was <laughs> laughing at the top of my lungs. I've done. He's I've a funny seen, guy. I've seen people doing that. Yep. First down, Adrian Peterson got the first down at the 42-yard line. Jason White in the shotgun, but Peterson flanks him. A quick throw, out complete inside the 40. Jawan Rankins uh, picked up a four. And Tatupu in on the stop again. We've called Lofa's name a bunch tonight. ABC's Wild Card Saturday starts great regional action to the NBA. You'll either see the Knicks against LeBron James and the Cavaliers, or the Nuggets takes on the Spurs Saturday at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific, right here on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. Then the NFL playoffs kick off. Wild Card doubleheader, Rams in Seattle. And a long ball here is intercepted. Poor choice. Jason Leach with the interception. Understand what Jason White was thinking there. The thing that these quarterbacks had done coming into the game is not turning the ball over and making stupid plays. That was one of them. Boy, that was just a hope and a prayer. There were four. There were four USC guys around the one receiver. That's Clayton getting knocked around, going downfield. This looks like an afterthought. Yeah. Jason Leach with his third interception of the year. It's like you just short circuit as a quarterback. He said, this play's not working the way we thought it was. Let me just throw it away. And he didn't get it nearly far enough. Well, Bob, just to let you know, White ended up on his back. So it might have been a little pressure in his face, and he just got that ball up in the air. So now Oklahoma's seen a 7-0 lead diminish to 14 to nothing and another mistake. First a fumble, now an interception. Liner, pressure from behind. Hit as he throws. But the man is there and dropped it. Dwayne Jarrett had his hands on it, but Dan Cody came flying around the backside, and there was a bullseye on the back of Matt Leinert's back. Yeah, a couple of things. Leinert is lucky to get this ball away. And then, then watch Cody, number 80, never gives up. That guy is uh, going 110 miles all the time. Matt this ball, will this feel ball, that one for a while. This ball could have been intercepted. Anything could have happened. Yes, he is fortunate that that ball wasn't picked off. Cody, the senior defensive captain, Mr. Intensity. Lines up at right defensive end here on second down and 10. Lindale White, big opening for White. He's got a first down and more. Across the 25 to the 26. A 15-yard run that time. Well, sometimes when you take a few days off, when you 
do get back, good things happen. Watch Lindale White in the offensive line blocking right up front. That just opens up real nicely. He's only carried three times, but already 31 yards and a touchdown. Well, I can say this about him. He's well rested. You bet. Hasn't practiced much in a month. But hurt his ankle in the UCLA game a month ago. Just outside their own 25 of the Trojans now. And it's White again. And tripped up. Lawrence Dampier, the redshirt freshman defensive tackle, got a big old arm on him and knocked him off his feet. I remember what my old, old partner Keith Jackson used to say about those running backs when they carry the ball a lot. <laughs> he says, why not? He says, they don't belong to a union and it ain't heavy. <laughs> Second down, a pickup of two by White that time. Reggie Bush just looking on right now from the Trojan sideline. And timeout's going to be taken by Oklahoma. We'll take a timeout. With 12 17 remaining in the first half, top ranked USC with a touchdown lead over number two, Oklahoma. The reason we're told for what was an official's timeout, an injury to Clint Ingram, who just kind of collapsed on the field. Here's his collision with a fullback, Lee Webb of USC, right on that left shoulder. And then right before the next snap, he just sort of fell down, and they're working on that left arm. Second down and eight for the Trojans with a touchdown lead. Liner incomplete, intended for Dwayne Jarrett. And that'll bring up third down and long. Jarrett running a, a, a stop route against Antonio Perkins. Perkins is a very experienced fifth-year senior with 11 interceptions to his credit. And Jarrett is a true freshman. And, and Matt Leiter threw that on the safe side. Yep, he did. Threw it away from uh, the defensive back. Now here's third down and eight. USC 43% of the third down conversions on the year. And they've averaged a long yardage of almost third and 12 throughout this early going of this game. Empty backfield. Leiter wants to go the other way. Throws. Caught by Jarrett. What a catch by the 6'5 freshman. That's freshman on freshman out there. Jarrett against Marcus Walker. Marcus is 5'11", and Dwayne is 6'5". Well, Bob and Brad, this, Dwayne Jarrett, a freshman, but this is a great play showing what he has learned. He looked back at the quarterback. He read it that it was a blitz. He had man coverage. Didn't waste a lot of time at the line of scrimmage. Moved down the field and focused on making the catch and protecting it with his body. Excellent, excellent growth for a wide receiver. Uh, third and long, they got 18. Now it's Liner. Might want it all. Going deep. Left sideline. Man's there. He's got him. Jarrett. Touchdown. Went to him twice in a row the second time. A 54-yard touchdown. Couldn't have thrown it any better. Extra point by Ryan Colleen is coming up. And after having 7-0 lead. Now the Sooners are in trouble. The top-ranked Trojans have scored 21 straight. The Another great, look. Great throw down the sideline. Broadney Poole, the free safety, is out there and doesn't do a job of covering him at all. The Heisman Trophy winners thrown for two. His team is up by two. The FedEx Orange Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive presentation brought to you by FedEx, proud sponsor of the BCS. Go air, go ground, go football. Nokia, take a closer look at Nokia. So much more than just a phone. Tostitos, nothing brings people together like Tostitos chips and salsa. Tostitos, share something good. And Pontiac and the first ever G6, the next official performance machine of the NCAA. You look in for the Goodyear blip to Pro Players Stadium. Second of two throws to the freshman Grease, and this one's 54 yards for a touchdown. Here's Marcus Walker, the true freshman. He's on a corner blitz. Watch.
watches. He's going to start, then he bails out of it. And Rodney Poole, the free safety, has to cover him. He does a poor job in covering, but uh, Bob Stoops was on the sideline giving the true freshman Walker a piece of his mind. Says, if when you're blitzing, you got to keep going and maybe get in his face. Of that 89 yards, Jarrett had 72 on his catches. On a third and long, it was good for 18. And then it was good for 54 and a perfect throw from Matt Leonard for the touchdown. And USC has 21 unanswered points in the last 7 minutes and 41 seconds. And now it's a dangerous time for the Sooners. They need to answer. Colleen's kick. Deep and out of the back of the end zone. So Oklahoma will have to work from its own 20-yard line. Time now here in the second quarter for our Aflac trivia question. Here's tonight's question in the 71st FedEx Orange Bowl. Duck didn't say anything. Who holds the NCAA bowl game record for most touchdown passes in a single game? There's a good one. Aflac. There you go. Aflac. <laughs> we'll give you the answer a little bit later. As you look down the field, it's a long ways from the end zone down to the 20-yard line for the Sooners. Adrian Peterson's been kept pretty much in check so far. He is again. He's got a yard, and that's it. Jason White had threw an interception. One of the two turnovers. The other one, the fumble by Mark Bradley on a punt return, and they immediately became points. Well, the thing here now is, is the momentum has shifted big time, as you mentioned. 21 unanswered points by SC. Oklahoma's got to get got to get something going they need to make some first downs move the ball down the field Mark Clayton their big play receiver hasn't touched it yet he's in a slot on the left side second down and now Jason White throws incomplete receiver intended slipped. for Clayton Clayton slipped down on the turf and so did Jason White after getting hit and a flag down in the backfield Call against the Sooners. Here's the slot receiver right here. Watch, he's going to slip down. Jason White threw the ball in the open area. Hey, Bob, this, we'll, we'll take a look at the hold here, but when you were watching Mark Clayton slip and fall down on the replay before, what happened was on this field, which is very good, and the grass is very low. It's a fast field. But if you don't plant and have your body under control, plant the right foot, you're going to fall down. What happened there, Mark Clayton, who normally runs a very precise route and is very accurate, tried to make a cut to his left off his left foot. You can't do it. you got to plant the right foot, cut to your left. He didn't do it that time. Now it's second down and 19 as the Trojans took the penalty. There was some debate whether or not they wanted to leave it at third down and long instead second down. White to throw across the middle and they get it to Mark Clayton this time. A pickup of about five out to the 16 yard line. And of course Mark Clayton of the same name of a guy that played a lot of football in the city with Dan Marino. Mark Clayton uh -huh. Mark Duper. Clayton is, is I think is, a, is one of the most underrated wide receivers in the country. I think he and Braylon Edwards are by far the two best coming out this year. He's the all-time leading receiver in catches, yards, and touchdowns in OU history in over 15 career 100-yard games for this year. They could use one out of him tonight, that's for sure. It's still third down and long. Third and 14. White pressured, throws, intercepted, picked off by Eric Wright. Eric Wright back to the 10-yard line. slips again the defense SC is not slipping watch his right's going to see it all the way and Bradley's going to slip right there right sees it all the way and makes the play second interception of the year and SC is rolling and now Jason White's game in this BCS national championship is starting to look like the game against LSU last year the Trojans have it first and goal right at the 10 yard line as you mentioned earlier, SC leads the nation. 
position in takeaways. Smith in motion. The gives to Lendell White. Hesitates, then follows his blockers close to the five-yard line. Boy, and right now, if the Sooners could just force a field goal, they'd be happy. Yeah. Eric Wright, freshman, all-Pac-10 performer. And you wonder about the psyche of that guy and the whole Sooner team. They led 7 to nothing in this game. And now they're in danger of being behind 28 to 7. Second down and goal at the Sooner 5. Leinert looks over to Steve Smith, drops to throw, now turns, pressure, throws back against the grain, and broken up. He intended for Alex Holmes, and he never had possession. Nice play by Marcus Walker, the freshman. And that quiets things down with a third down coming up. Pete Carroll, last year a share of the national championship in only his third year. Reggie Bush and Rufus Alexander have a little takedown party. Well, he even lost his hat. Oop, he held that last punch. That's good. Now well, it's third and goal. <laughs> when, when, when you get all the uh, headlines and all the news writing and everything else, you're going to get some attention from the defense. Matt Leonard's going to take a timeout. And we'll take one with him with 9.21 left in the first half. 21-7 is our score. Now the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year. Let's have a look. Our aerial coverage courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airship stars and stripes along with us tonight over Pro Player Stadium in South Florida and the beautiful pictures not a pretty picture right now for the Sooners but a very good one for the Trojans of USC let's see if they can capitalize on yet another turnover they've got a third and goal at the Sooner five already leading 21 to 7 liner quick throw touchdown to Steve Smith The Heisman Trophy winner's third touchdown pass of the night. This to Steve Smith, who was once his favorite target. And coming back from an injury is in the Sooner end zone. The pencil got him there. The guy that drew that play up beat him. And that's Norm Chow. Colleen for the point after. Again, a low snap handled well by Malone. The extra point is good. And the Oklahoma Sooners have matched a season high with three turnovers, and all of them have cost them touchdowns. And they've done it in the last three possessions. Right here, he just going to come straight into the uh, straight into the end zone. Nobody takes him. Everybody's outside, thinking there's something on the outside. This is a heck of a catch by Smith going back away. Did that ball hit the ground? No, I guess not. It was close. USC has scored on their last three possessions. There's Oklahoma. Norm and there's Norm. And that was just a that was he had three guys to the left side. The the first and the third receivers broke to the outside, and the middle guy went right over the middle. Leonard having a field day right now. Steve Smith, all three of his catches have been on third down, including third and goal. Going to take another look. I just thought maybe at the end that ball hit the ground and the yellow paints. Ooh, I think it might have. Well, I don't know. Is his right hand underneath the ball? I'm not sure. No replay in the game, though. It was experimental in the Big Ten this year, not in bowl games. Couldn't tell for sure whether his right hand was completely under that ball. At any rate, it's 28 to 7. That we know. Largest deficit this year for the Sooners. And they won't get a chance to run back the kick either. And now what will Oklahoma do? 
Coming up, uh, the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Show. John Craig and Aaron will join us. We'll have the Orange Bowl Halftime Show. Our FedEx Air and Ground College Football Teams of the Year. And a lot more. Rock's biggest stars have joined the BCS celebration, so stay tuned later. We're going to kick off our second half with a world premiere video from U2. It's the SBC first half music highlights. That's coming up after halftime. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, Todd Harris from Pro Players Stadium where the Sooners are in a batch of trouble right now. Adrian Peterson got about three yards, and that's all. Frosty Rucker made the stop. Oklahoma offensively averaged 36 points per game. So they're used to scoring a lot of points. They can, they've got the quarterback to, to, to throw it. They've got the receivers. They've got the offensive line. They just got to stop making mistakes. Chuck Long not having the success. Norm Chow is Chuck on the left. The offensive coordinator for Oklahoma. And a former Heisman Trophy winning uh, Heisman runner-up, I should say, to Bo Jackson back in his day. White throws short to Peterson. Almost looked like an incidental face mask. A flag does fly in. And I thought Manuel Wright may have gotten a hand on Adrian Peterson's face mask. Peterson is not used as a receiver in this Oklahoma offense. That's his fourth catch of the whole year. So let's see if that was the call. Incidental face mask, number 90 on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat second down. And still second down on the face mask call. Let's check in with Todd. All right, thank you, Brad. The man who tossed the ceremonial comb, Mr. Shaquille O'Neal of the Miami Heat, now makes his home in Miami. He used to be in L.A. He knows a little bit about defense. Shaq, are you surprised with the Trojan defense? I'm not surprised. They're a great team. They're showing a lot of fight out there. They're showing a lot of dominance. All you score is welcome up. As a professional player, you see the talent out here on the field. You look at USC. Are, in your opinion, this, is this team loaded? This team is very loaded. They got the Heisman Trophy winner. They got a great coach. I see Ken Norton Jr. over there on the sideline, defensive coach. Great team, and hopefully they can pull it out. Now, you know Coach Saban's down here with the Dolphins. Any chance we can see you maybe as a tight end? If he wants me, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Shaq. Back up to you, Brad. Uh, Shaq and Dwayne Wade and the Miami Heat's 14-game winning streak stopped last night by the Seattle Supersonics. We've got action in the NBA for you on Saturday. Don't forget, Knicks against the Cavaliers or the Nuggets and the Spurs at 1 Eastern on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. First down, Oklahoma. They need a lot more first downs. Here's the throw and almost picked off again as Travis Wilson was cutting in. The pass was going out, and Matt Grudegood was closer to the football than anybody. What SC is doing is they're playing a little bit of zone back there, and they're seeing the ball much better than Oklahoma is. Receivers for Oklahoma are slipping and falling, and SC are the defensive backs just going for the ball. They see it very good. Remember, the first drive of the night by Oklahoma was 92 yards, and it was almost perfect, and nothing has gone right since. Second and 10. Draw play. Peterson hitting the backfield again. Oh, they know where he is at all times. Manuel Wright, who had the face mask call a couple of plays ago, is the guy that got the first hand on him to make the stop. So now Adrian Peterson has passed Ron Dane for the most rushing yards by a freshman, but he's got only 32 yards on 13 carries yeah. tonight. He's had some huge second halves. So they're going to need all of him and everything else they've got in their arsenal now. So they trail 28 to 7. Out of the shotgun. White steps up, has time across the middle on the run as Bradley's got a first down and more. Mark Bradley keeps his footing, still on his feet. And he's out of bounds, but not before he got to the 36 yard line. 34 yard pass play. Jason White to Mark Bradley. The Sooners have the receivers to get back in this ball game. They just need to start making some plays from behind the offense, the protection. Bradley's going across, breaks the tackle by uh, Wyatt, and keeps his feet, gets downfield. Oklahoma has not had good field position, average field position in their own 18 yard line. Down to the 36, first down, Oklahoma. 
Play action to Peterson. White's in trouble, and down he goes way back by midfield. Sean Cody. The All-American senior captain. Out of Hacienda Heights, California. Discipline defense. Cody was the outside guy, the defensive end, responsible for containment. White should have pulled up and threw the ball inside. Look at White Cody. Walked right into that one. Yeah. 14-yard loss. Cody's 10th sack of the season. The co-defensive player of the year in the Pac-10. Both guys have got a Cody on the defensive line, and they both play with a full motor all the time. Now it's second down in a mile for Oklahoma. Second and 24. Travis Wilson in motion. Here's a quick throw and a wide out screen out to Mark Clayton looking for his blockers. And he got it back to about the 41 yard line. Justin Wyatt knocked him out of bounds. Jason White is a little bit out of sync, Brad. I mean, even, even that throw where you just pick it up and throw it out to your wide receiver was low. That's not helping your receiver. Stick it to him right shoulder length high where you can catch it and take off with it. Remember in the last two games last year the Big 12 championship and then the BCS national championship he had four interceptions and no touchdowns didn't help that Adrian Peterson just ran right into his hand as he was trying to throw that one. It's probably why Adrian Peterson's not in on passing down. Doesn't know who to pick up doesn't know how to block. Third and 15. White waits scrambles Trying to find somebody open and does. Keywan Jones down inside the 20. That's why Keywan Jones is in in passing situations and Adrian Peterson isn't. On third and 15, the Sooners get 25 at a first down. Well, when, when, when White starts scrambling, Keywan Jones is going to go straight down the middle of the field. He stops there and then he starts scrambling. Now watch, watch Keywan Jones. Right down the middle of the field he goes. Three wide receivers trot out to the left side here on a first and 10, 10th ten, play of the drive at the Trojan 16. Sooners desperately needing not just a score but a touchdown to get back in the game. Peterson. Broke one tackle but not the second. Matt Rudigood. Boy, those guys really know how to hit people. Rudigood and Tatupu. It'll bring up second down. Well, she can be anyone, and now she gets to be herself. Golden Globe nominee Jennifer Garner stars in a new season of Alias. Two-hour premiere event starts tomorrow at 9 Central. A 9, 8 Central, only on ABC. Follows Lost. And Jennifer, we understand, is a little bit under the weather in real life, but she's watching tonight. We hope she feels better. Maybe she's a Sooner fan. I don't know. Second down and nine. Clayton in motion. Draw play, Keywan Jones. Broke one tackle, skips down and falls forward near the 10. Lawrence Jackson made the tackle. Four and a half minutes left in the half. Bob, this four down territory. No, I, I Remember, they don't have a kicker that's kicked a field goal. If they <laughs> well, use that's the true. Freshman. That's true. But I think you got to get something out of this drive. If you would go for it on four down, fourth down, and not get anything out of it, that would be another negative for your for your for your team you, you need to get some points out of this drive those numbers aren't too bad until you look all the way to the far right those two interceptions one was when his receiver slipped and the other one he just threw up a jump ball third down and four big big play for the Sooners here the throw is low again and a great hit put on by Justin Wyatt and it's a loss of two the Sooners are going through the motions. USC is attacking and making plays. And they'll bring out the field goal unit following this play. That ball was partially tipped by Frosty Rucker. Yeah, Bradley needs to get a block on, on, the, on the defensive back. Bradley misses the block and the Clayton gets cream. Garrett Hartley is a true freshman who has never attempted a collegiate field goal. This will be a 29-yard attempt from the right hash. The kick on the way. It didn't look like a freshman there. He knocked that thing through. So they do get something out of it. With 3.10 left in the half, Bob Stoops. Team puts three on the board. But they're still in a big hole with 3.10 remaining 
in the first half of the 71st Benex Orange Bowl. Score, USC 28, Oklahoma 10. You're watching the FedEx Orange Bowl on ABC Sports. Got celebrities on hand. We've got Will Ferrell in the house. Of course, Shaquille O'Neal is holding court here as well. And Puff Daddy, if that wasn't enough, Pat Riley, Jerry Bruckheimer, Gary Sheffield, they're all here. But the man or the woman or the mouse that trumps them all, Mickey Mouse, all the way from the Pasadena Rose Bowl where he was the Grand Marshal. And the word on the street, guys, is Mickey Mouse has a huge announcement tonight. That's what my sources tell me, Brad. All right, we're looking forward to that. I got a feeling he took the Disney jet over from the Rose Bowl. <laughs> Don't you think? I wonder who he's pulling for. <laughs> so a 68 yard drive and 13 plays they would have loved to have gotten seven but they got three out of that young fella and in over six minutes the field goal makes it 28 to 10 Reggie Bush backpedaling inside his own five waiting for the kick a high kick at the four is Reggie Bush Reggie's been bottled up pretty well tonight and they'll do it again this time dropped at the 21 yard line well, earlier in the quarter, we asked you the AFLAC trivia question. Here's what it was. Who holds the NCAA bowl game record for most touchdown passes in a single game? Fellas, who you're, wants to go first? You're leading. You got to go first. I got a feeling maybe Chuck Long, who I mentioned earlier, was runner-up to Bo Jackson for the Heisman Trophy. That's my guess. How can we get, catch up with you if you keep getting the things right? I don't know if I'm right or not. We'll uh, look after this play. I like Chuck Long. All right. Swanee, what do you think? I don't know. I'm just going to say Danny Warfel. I just remember him having a big game at the Sugar Bowl. Yeah, that's a good point. You might, you might have it. At the 21, Leinert's having a good game. Three touchdowns already. This one dropped by Jarrett. Incomplete. It'll bring up second down. So our Aflac trivia answer after all year long. Aha. I recognize those colors. Chuck Long going to the end zone for the touchdown. Six touchdown passes against Texas in the Freedom Bowl. So there he is on the left. He wishes he could throw a couple touchdown passes in yes. the remaining time of this first half. And hoping that the defense might give them another chance before halftime. Second down and ten. Toss to Bush with blockers in front. And now he's free. Reggie Bush across the 40. Down the sideline and all the way to the 40-yard line. In fact, they don't knock him out until he gets to the 35. You can bottle him up and they, bottle exactly. him up and bottle him up, and then this happens. He'll get a one, he'll get a two, he'll get a three, minus three, minus four, maybe plus four, and then he'll get a 35 on you or an 80 on you. This guy's got speed to burn. Little toss to the left. He got some nice blocking, but watch him get through the hole. That's Dominic Bird that comes back in motion and knocks out the outside linebacker. And Dante Nicholson has trouble getting him down, and the middle linebacker finally gets him out. First down at the 35. Trojans could do more damage before halftime. Inside handoff to Bird, the tight end. Haven't seen much of that play. That got two or three. Larry Burdeen made the stop. So Bird had caught a touchdown pass. In fact, had two passes for 50 yards on a drive that scored a touchdown. Carries the ball that time. And you know, there's only two starters returning from this USC offense this year. The quarterback and the right guard, Matua. And the offensive coordinator, which is probably as important as, as Matt Leiner. Because Norm Chow has done outstanding things, calling the right plays at the right times, not asking these players to do anything that they can't do. Second down, short nine. Liner has time, lofts it to Smith. He caught it, touchdown! What a catch! Touchdown pass for Matt Leonard in the first half. Boy, they used all of the field on that one. That smile says it all. Ryan Colleen for the point after. Up and good. 
just when Oklahoma had gotten three points, Pete Carroll's Trojans stormed down the field. And four touchdowns already for Matt Leiter. Ties an Orange Bowl record. Look at the catch by Smith with guys draped all over him. 35 to 10 Trojans. Back here in Miami, coming up on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Show, Tommy Tuberville, coach of Auburn, will be here along with Carson Palmer, used to play quarterback for USC. And USC's been very aggressive in this game. I'll show you a situation which Matt Leiner took advantage of. And we'll talk about what the Oklahoma Sooners need to do to try and get back in this ballgame. This one is looking good. Coming yeah. up at halftime, Brad, back to you. See you in a couple of minutes. Ryan Killeen to kick. Travis Wilson and Brandon Jones are waiting on the other end. They haven't had a chance to return with Colleen kicking in this direction here in the second quarter. He's knocked him back there for touchbacks. And a lot of ground to make up for the Sooners. They will have a chance at this one a yard deep. And Travis Wilson knocked out. About the 26 yard line by Lee Webb on the special teams. The Rocks, biggest stars, have joined the BCS celebration. Reminded to stay tuned later as we kick off our second half with a world premiere video from U2. It's the SBC first half music highlights after halftime. For some happy Trojan fans, they're outnumbered by Oklahoma fans. But they're certainly getting to make all the noise right now because they lead 35 to 10. And they've scored on their last four possessions, four touchdowns in their last four possessions. Pressure is on last year's Heisman Trophy winner now, Jason White, because this year's has already tied an Orange Bowl record with four touchdown passes. Adrian Peterson got out to the 30. That's about the most room he's had, and that's not much. The quarterback comparison, two Heisman Trophy winners, that one from a year ago, Leiner from just weeks ago, and Matt is shining right now with 226 yards and four touchdowns. White lofts it out to Peterson, and Peterson trying to carry Trojans to the first down marker. Boy, took a wicked hit from about four of them, including Lofa Tutupu. He's short of the first down by about a yard. We've got a minute 10 remaining in the half. The score, the top-ranked Trojans of USC, 35, number two, Oklahoma, only 10. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, Todd Harris with you. And now, ball down. And the Trojans have it. Of all things to happen to him with a minute to go, Oklahoma's turned it over again. Jones stumbles as he's coming out of his break, and then he runs into the into quarterback White. Watch this. He slips right there. Oklahoma is having all kinds of problems. The ball comes out. I think Jones they, slips right off the bat. I think they need different shoes at halftime. Yeah, they. they it might be a good halftime adjustment. Get some, get some shoes that work. With a 35 to 10 lead. I wouldn't don't think that right? USC won't try to do something right here. Oh, yeah. At the 36, empty backfield. Liner, pump fake one way. Oh, throws back to Reggie Bush, but he overthrew him. Reggie was wide open, and Matt threw it over his head. The Sooners with a season high in turnovers, and they've all come in two quarters. Well, Texas A&M and Oklahoma State scored a lot of points on this Oklahoma defense, but a couple of touchdowns on those came off a of special team touchdowns. They're just not getting any pressure at all on Matt Leinert. The defensive line, no pressure at all. Oklahoma State. And AM both scored 35, but not in the first half, which USC has done. Leiner down the middle, incomplete. Making a diving attempt to Steve Smith, and he couldn't get his hands under that one. Well, that brings up third down and long. Matt Leiner looking to the sideline where things have gone perfectly for him tonight so far. Yeah. 
Well, the, the best thing that's going for him is he's had great field position after turnovers, and he's got all time, all, all kinds of time to throw. Third down and 10. Oklahoma desperate for a stop here. Here they come. They're going to come from the corner. Well, they fake it he now. Brandon Shelby backs out of it. Now he does bring some pressure. Liner goes complete, though. And it's Dwayne Jarrett. And it's another first down for the Trojans. They're not done yet. 14 yards on third and 10. Clock will stop while they move the chains, and Liner trying to hustle his offense up there. Yeah. There's the leadership of your Heisman Trophy quarterback. Oh, He's yeah. directing traffic. Recognized the blitz, checked out of it, checked to something else, and threw quickly to his big, big uh, split in. Oklahoma was even a man short, it appeared. Confusion on their timeout. defense, Oklahoma. and they take a timeout. That's their first timeout in the second half. So Oklahoma's defense will try to regroup. The Trojans don't need much regrouping. They lead 35 to 10 with a half minute left in the half. And the guy that looked like the old original bachelor in the middle of that huddle, Matt Leinart. He's pretty eligible tonight. <laughs> so have his receivers been. Four oh. touchdown passes. And the offensive line, we got to give them a little bit of credit. We mentioned in the opening that how young and inexperienced that offensive line was. They're doing a great job on that defensive line, getting all kinds of time to throw. You know, Grease, before that timeout, it looked as though Liner was going to try to get his troops up, spike the ball, and just kind of regroup a little bit. And then Oklahoma did him a favor by having to call a defensive timeout. Yeah, not enough players on the field. Already, Dwayne Jarrett is over 100 yards receiving, including a touchdown. Steve Smith has caught a couple. Adrian Peterson can only look on, hoping his defense can stop the Trojan steamroller. Smith, another catch, and they stop him this time. Rodney Poole on the tackle from his safety spot. And 21 seconds remaining. Now USC will take a break. Trojans with a 35 to 10 lead trying to lay their claim undisputedly to the championship wow. and in the first half they look all of the number one team haven't they? they they have looked good and not made any mistakes they are rolling by comparison Oklahoma has not looked good at all and they look kind of out of sync after that first drive offensively where they took it down 92 yards they have done nothing offensively Bob and Brad, you talked about Steve Smith earlier in the ball game, the fact that he had broken his leg and been out. What we're seeing right now in this ball game is the Steve Smith that they thought they'd have it available to them all year long. The leader as a wide receiver, mature, the guy who's going to take charge. Now, when he came back from that broken leg, he was a little bit rusty, but right now he's hitting full stride midseason and he's not beat up like a lot of the guys have been from playing a 12 game season. So he's out here playing his best ball game and what we always find in a big ball game like this, sometimes you expect your stars to do all the work, and they've got to do their share. But it's one of the guys that's not maybe the main star, not Reggie Bush, not necessarily your main star on the team that comes up and plays big for you. And I think that's what Steve Smith is doing for this team this afternoon or this evening. Well, you know, it's amazing, too, guys. You think about what USC could have had. Mike Williams. Think about Mike Williams on the field as well with Smith and Jarrett. And then you've got a juggernaut, Brad. That's a pretty scary thought, Todd. You're up. Second down and a dozen. Reggie Bush in the backfield. But it's Matt Leinart under pressure this time. And they're going to get to him. That's and the, it's Dan Cody. That's the first sack in 23 pass attempts. That Matt Leinart has gone down. Cody gets the sack. 14 seconds left in the half. Dan Cody, who played in the Orange Bowl as a true freshman and had three tackles against Florida State in a national championship win four years ago, comes up with a big play there. And now each Cody on each side has picked up his 10th sack of the season. Dan Cody, the leader, took a year off to try to deal 
with some emotional problems. And he is the emotional leader now of this team. This was against Texas A&M. Big talk before the fourth quarter with his teammates, and he kind of overextended himself, and kaboom, down he went. Came back on the next play and sacked the quarterback. He's that kind of player. <laughs> he's a captain now. He is, he is a good one. We talk to Bob Stoops about that as his teammates got him off after that sack and he said there was nothing wrong with him. It's just one of those things. And Stoops said, you know, I get that way sometimes on the sideline. You start screaming, you get all into it, your adrenaline starts flowing, all of a sudden you get a little woozy. I've done that once or twice. Yeah. And Cody's 25th sack, his 10th of the year. Sean Cody on the other side also had his 10th sack of the year. We got everybody here except Buffalo Bill Cody, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and 21. All right. Pete Carroll said, all right, no turnovers. We don't want to help him, but at least we want to come out here with a field goal attempt. Liner looking left. He's going to throw it out. Incomplete. Jason Mitchell was the intended receiver. Just be safe with the ball. <laughs> So now they're going to trot out Ryan Colleen, their field goal kicker, to try to add three more to the total. Finally, Oklahoma stiffens enough at least to force a field goal attempt. Now Ryan Colleen had had some troubles earlier in the season, too, but he hit five field goals against UCLA, which tied a school record, and he has hit his last seven in a row. Yeah. And this will be an attempt at about 45 yards. They'll call it 44 officially. Colleen from 44 yards away. Kick on the way, and it's good. What a half of football offensively for the top-ranked team in the country. They have put 38 on the board. I don't think you can play any better than what SC has played. Offensively, they've done everything they've wanted to do. Defensively, they've shut down Oklahoma, aside from that first drive of the ball game. Special teams, they've gained a turnover. They've made a field goal. They've just played the state free ball. The points off turnovers, you see it in basketball sometimes, and you kind of marvel at it, but normally you don't see it this dramatically in a football game. This was Mark Bradley thinking that they had touched the ball. He fumbled it. That turned into a Lindell White touchdown. Then Jason White inexplicably just threw up a jump ball. That one was intercepted. That turned into a touchdown. Then the interception by Eric Wright. He took it back to the 10-yard line. That became a touchdown. Then the fumble by Kiwan Jones. And they turned that into a touchdown. The last one, a fumble recovery by Grudegood, one of four forced by the Trojans, but at least it was only a field goal that time. Oklahoma did not want a record like that, especially through two quarters. Well, you just can't turn the ball over. I mean, you cannot be a good football team and turn the ball over. This will be the final play of the half if somebody touches the ball, and they do. It's Travis Wilson, and he goes down at the 25-yard line. Right now, it's total domination by the top-ranked team in the country, the Trojans of USC. They'll go to the locker room, and I'm sure they never anticipated this in a million years, that they'd go to the locker room with a four-touchdown lead. Swanee? Well, Coach, we realize this is unfamiliar territory for you this year. Some mistakes on your part, some good plays by the Trojans. How do you coach them up for the second half? Well, as much as anything, don't beat yourself, which we have. You know, three turnovers on our end of the field result in whatever, 17 points, and then two bombs, which... You know, we have safe coverages that ought to be able to cover. We just got to make plays. Okay, Coach, see you in the second half. Todd Harris? All right, thank you, Swanee Pete. I think everyone in America is surprised. You know how good this team is. Are you surprised? Yeah, I'm surprised that we're out like this right now because we have so much respect for Oklahoma and they're a great football team. We got a whole half to get this thing going. We scored 38. They may be able to score a bunch too. But uh, it, it's a great showing for our first half of the, in this ballgame. I hope we can do something in the second half. You've got Norm Chow up there. You're running the defense. Do you make any adjustments or you just keep letting the steamroller oh, yeah, go? We got a long halftime, so we're going to talk about some stuff, try to come up with some good things here. Good luck to you. That's it. They've won 31 straight with a halftime lead. They've won 21 straight in the last two years. Great plays by great players. That's what the Trojans have going for them right now. And they lead 38 to 10. We'll be back with a Pontiac High Performance Halftime Show right after this. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television.
BCS championship and right now the Trojans are only two quarters away and partner you know John and the guys were talking about it we didn't expect this either turnovers kill you every game not ever this bad though well, you, don't you always hear coaches talk about turnovers now if you're in USC's locker room you got to go out and play the second half and expect Oklahoma to play better and if you're in Oklahoma and you're down by four touchdowns you say hey, that wasn't our team the team that played all year we're capable of going out and scoring four or five touchdowns in the second half you, you, you should be fortunate, you should be lucky that we have another half of football to yep. play and you're not going to walk away the season with that one in your mind. They get the football to start the second half, that'll help them, so I hope you've got some Home Depot coaching adjustments for us. You've got to build something here. Well, you got to keep your intensity on both offense and defense if you're a Southern Cow, and for Oklahoma, you got to get after Liner. you got to pressure this guy and settle down on offense and make some plays and don't turn the ball over. He's only been hurried a couple of times by Dan Cody both times hit after he threw near his own end zone once and sacked once. Other than that Matt Leonard has looked like a Heisman Trophy winner. He's looked all the part of the All-American that he is and he's got his team a 38 to 10 lead. Here we go second half. 71st FedEx Orange Bowl ADT championship trophy on the line two more quarters to go touchback Oklahoma will work from the 20 as we check in with Todd Harris well Brad the story from the USC locker room was just what Bob Greasy said intensity I talked to a few of the coaches they said their biggest concern really is the players are gonna get tired to a man not many of them sat down during the whole halftime they wanted to get back out on the field and finish what they started intensity is high they said they haven't seen anything like this in a long time they actually had to hold the players in the tunnel because they wanted to get back out on the FedEx Orange Bowl field right now from North Oklahoma let's check in with Lynn Swan well guys I'll tell you when I talked to coach Stoops he said we're not going to abandon the run game we're going to stay with it we're going to go after it we need some big plays on our running attack we had a 90 yard drive in the first suggestion of the first half we want to come back and do that again but what was more interesting to me was as Oklahoma was coming back onto the field quiet somber not down just quiet the locker room for USC was wide open they were singing they were chanting they were emotional now, I don't know if they left the doors open on purpose but that was a little bit of gamesmanship I hope I think that they hope will work in their favor Swanee they almost left the trap door open on that <laughs> run by Peterson he dropped it got it on a two hopper and picked up a first down that could have been disaster to open the third quarter here's a draw play Peterson again, and he got out to about the 35 yard line. So, good start as we take a look at our Tostitos first half game summary statistically. Well, you got to look at the turnovers and the points off of turnovers. OU has turned the ball over four times, neither team rushing the ball very well. And then you look at that average starting position. Oh, yeah. You'll take it near midfield anytime. Yeah. Seven of. Uh, Seven possessions, five of them for Oklahoma has started at their 20-yard line or worse. We talk a lot about the opening drive of the third quarter being big. This is huge for the Sooners. White threw in a little bit behind, and now they're going to see incomplete to Clayton. He thought he caught it, or at least he tried to make the officials believe he had. And Mark's got a big smile on his face. So that's going to bring up third down and long. But even though, even though Jason White is a sixth-year senior, even though he has a Heisman in his house, and even though that he's 27 and three, you got to believe his confidence is a little bit shaken. No doubt. And he's the guy that's got to lead him back. The coaches can talk, but he's the leader on the field that's got to bring him back. The senior on a tunnel, Oklahoma, in the shotgun on third and seven. Drops back, flushed out of the pocket. Goes cross field and broken up, intended for Bradley. Justin Wyatt made a great play on the corner. Just good man-to-man -man coverage by Southern California's defensive backs. And I'm sure this is exactly what Pete Carroll wanted his defense to do. Come out, first possession, make him punt the football. And now they've got a punt it to Reggie Bush after Wyatt made that great play. They had his left arm wrapped a little bit around there, but in slow motion, it looked more that way than it did in real time. Ferguson to punt. Bush on the other end. They'd like to keep it away from him. Good kick. And Reggie misjudged that. 
That punt went farther than he thought it was going to. He looked like a center fielder backing right. up and losing one in the lights. So no damage done there. A 50 yard kick. USC, their offensive leaders. You can't get a better leader than Matt Leinart was in the first half. Four touchdown passes, tying an Orange Bowl record. We still got two quarters to go. Yeah, no interceptions, and that is key. Don't, don't make mistakes. Reggie Bush really not doing anything. What he used is compared to what he normally does. He had that 145 yard run, yeah. and Jarrett over 100 yards receiving. So they work from their own 15. Yeah. If you're USC and you're Matt Leinart, you don't necessarily need to score the second half. Just don't turn it over and help the opposition. Uh, play action. They throw and they get a first down. Kirkman, the fullback, rumbles out of bounds. Pick up a 15. You got Norm Chow calling these plays for you. And that's a nice, safe play. Gets the quarterback away from the defensive line. And it's a short completion. And, of course, he's been with more good quarterbacks than probably any oh boy. football coach in history. First at BYU under Lavelle Edwards. 27 years at BYU, he had three quarterbacks that went on to be number one picks in the NFL. Tim McMahon and Steve Young and Robbie Bosco and a Heisman Trophy winner in Ty Detmer. Then Carson Palmer here at USC after Phillip Rivers at NC State. He's worked with good ones. Here's Lendale White into the secondary. The big fella's got another first down. 14 yards, and he's just rumbling. First half possessions. This is pretty impressive after that opening punt. This this one here, the one yard, that was after the punt, but the rest of them, look at this. Scored on five straight. That first six-yard one Got a was couple. after the fumble by Bradley in punt yeah. return. A couple of the Oklahoma possessions. Or field possession, I mean. Reggie Bush comes out as a wide receiver on the right side. Lindell White stays in there. There's Reggie in motion. They fake the end around to him, go straight ahead with White. And the tackle made by Rufus Alexander, the outside linebacker. You know, we're talking about Norm Chow and what he did before he got here and what he's done. Before Norm Chow came to USC, the 65 years before that, USC only had two All-American quarterbacks. And since then, since he's came, they've had two Heisman Trophy <laughs> winning quarterbacks. That's pretty impressive. BYU hasn't been the same since he left. USC hasn't been the same since he arrived. Great point, partner. Second and long, Leinert looks one way, wanted to come back the other. Buys himself some time and goes down the middle incomplete. We talked about all the guys Norm Chow has tutored, if you will. And I mentioned the BYU guys, McMahon and Young and Bosco and Detmer, who won a Heisman Trophy. Then he went to North Carolina State, turned Phillip Rivers into a number one draft choice. Yep. Carson Palmer, a Heisman Trophy winner. And yep. Matt Leinart, likewise. <laughs> well, Bob and Brad, when you look at all that, and it's not just the quarterback, but it's his offensive game planning, and I have to ask myself one simple question. I know what it's going to be. Go ahead. Why isn't Norm Chow a head coach? Sure. That's a good question, Swanee. It sure is. Third and ten, line it, rolls. Going to go deep. Got a man out. Smith got it inside the ten. First and goal, USC at the seventh. There was one man out for USC. Smith, the only guy that was out. Leiter rode to this way to his right side, threw the ball to only one guy. This is for protection. He wants to get outside the pocket. Look at all the. That's the only guy that's out in the route, and he beats two Oklahoma players. And oh, again, oh. a perfect throw. Yes, lays it right in there. Oh, B Bob, you say he beats two guys. Well, he gets open by a little bit. I mean, that's an unbelievable throw. When he threw that pass, there was no reason why you would think he was an open receiver. But he lays it to a spot where only his receiver can get to. First and goal just inside the Oklahoma seven. Liner play action. Pressured and down he goes and he fumbled. Nope, they're going to say the ball was dead. The Sooners covered it, but the referee said he was down. Every time the Sooners have a spark of an opportunity to make a play, a turnover, it's not there. Verdine is a guy that hit him. The ball came out, but his knee apparently had already hit the ground. 
brings up second and goal. And Brent Venables trying to push back his head coach, who's upset over this play. Yeah, he knows they need a spark. They need something good to happen. Ooh, they're seeing his arm came. Yeah, that was an incomplete yeah. pass. His ball was, his hand was coming forward. Barely. Yeah. Second down and goal back to the live action. Mitchell in motion. Leonard gives it off to Lindale White. White bangs his way down to the four, maybe to the three. Lance Mitchell, the middle linebacker, made the stop. He'll bring up third and goal. Yeah. This, you know, you were talking about Jason White's got to lead his team back. The Oklahoma defense is somehow going to stop the bleeding or it's not going to matter. That's right. And, 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 and where they have not stopped it is in the pass defense, which has bugged them in three or four games throughout the year. When teams have scored a lot of points, that secondary for Oklahoma has just been porous. USC has passed on all of its third downs, all eight of them. They've got third and goal here. Reggie Bush shuffles in the backfield. Liner over the end zone. Steve Smith touchdown. And a new Orange Bowl record. Five touchdown passes. And Smith has yet another. That's very similar to the touchdown pass he caught before. have found the weakness and I think the weakness is throwing on the middle linebacker Lance Mitchell extra point by Ryan Colleen is up and right now it's a Trojan clinic with 10 42 remaining in the third quarter Oklahoma is the team that needed a touchdown to open up the third quarter instead it's Norm Chow's offense Pete Carroll's Trojans and Matt Leinart going deep once and then to the end zone next Watching the FedEx Orange Bowl on ABC Sports. Another touchdown as we take a look at our Chrysler passing playbook. And Bob, this looks like a Chrysler Hemi here. Well, they, this is the second time they ran this play. Steve Smith is over here at number two. They're going to run a little option route on the middle linebacker, Lance Mitchell. I mean, this is a wide receiver running on a middle linebacker. Now, this time he goes to the inside. The time before, he ran straight up the field. You know, you know, that's a mismatch. Whenever you get a, a short, quick guy on a middle linebacker with a short throw, they found, must have found that in some film study and said, hey, wait a minute, we're going to do this every time we get inside the five-yard line. Smith with his third touchdown catch ties David Terrell's Michigan record that we saw here at the Orange Bowl a few years ago. Leonard's five is a new record. Oklahoma will have to take a knee. Travis Wilson downs it. And they'll have to work from the 20-yard line. Coming up on Monday, 25 men fight for just one woman. <laughs> I think that used to happen in college. <laughs> America's favorite bachelorette begins her search for love in the Big Apple. The Bachelorette, two-hour premiere, Monday at 9, 8 Central, only on ABC. Got an injured... Oklahoma player down. I think it's uh, Garon Allen. Face down, and the trainers are out to have a look. We haven't, thankfully, had a lot of injury problems tonight so far, other than the pride of the Sooners right now. That is in some serious injury phase, 45 to 10. So while they work on him, you look into a sold out Pro Player Stadium. Our aerial coverage, courtesy. Uh, the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new Assurance Tires. Captain Tracy Rockhold and the gang in the Stars and Stripes ship above the stadium. Nice to have you all along with us, guys. Thanks for the great pictures on a beautiful night in South Florida in the Broward-Dade County line here. And the line's been drawn right now. The Trojans know that the BCS National Championship is only about 26 minutes away. There's the ADT Championship Trophy. That's what they want to take home. They didn't get a chance to capture it last year, but they're well on their way right now. Peter 
Anderson dropped. Manny Wright again made the stop. He's been a force on that defensive line tonight, along with Cody and Patterson and Rucker and Jackson, all those guys. And they didn't know whether he was going to be able to play either. As you take a look at the total offense for both teams, USC's would be a lot greater, but they've gotten some turnovers deep into Oklahoma's territory where they don't didn't have to go very far to score touchdowns. Now near the 10 minute mark remaining in the third quarter. Jason White, the pressure on him. And the Sooners offense. Zone blitz and he overshot Travis Wilson who had about a step. Now they had an opportunity there to make a play and you can't you can't get frustrated and you can't just just turn it in you just you have to play the plays and you didn't know when you're going to have an opportunity to make a play and that was an opportunity for a big play they had a blitz on they dropped the lineman in coverage but still Wilson had a half step in that seam and white didn't hit him Jason white is 0 for 3 since coming out of the locker room in the second half this time he stands and waits, and now he's going to run with it. Something he couldn't do a year ago with those bad knees. But he slides across the 30 to the 32, a 13-yard scamper, and a first down. No more braces on those knees, yeah. remember, as he had left knee surgery in 2001. Then the right knee went in 02. And so here's a guy that has battled through two knee injuries. First it was the left knee. On this play, and nobody touched him. This was a scramble. Now that's a sack, but that wasn't the one that hurt his knee. This is last year in the Sugar Bowl when he had a terrible time. Adrian Peterson. So this is kind of reminiscent of the Sugar Bowl a year yeah, that ago. That was a nightmare, and this is turning into a nightmare. Those the knee injuries were nightmares also, but yep. you're right. He couldn't run like that in the years past, but uh, what, what they need to do is, is, is be patient. they got to run the ball some. And people that haven't seen Oklahoma, when they hand that ball to Adrian Peterson, he could go the distance at any time. But this defense is pretty strong. Peterson been bottled up pretty well. He got another first down. Tough run for the freshman. Jason Leach with the tackle. Right now, USC, there was question marks in some of their games. Remember Cal, right down to the yeah. final minutes, looked like they may be able to beat them. UCLA. UCLA, week. their last regular season game. There were some other close calls. Everybody said, well, you know, Stanford, yeah. maybe maybe they're not that good. Then Cal got routed in the Holiday Bowl by yeah. Texas Tech. Everybody said, well, you know, the Big 12. Well, right now, it's Pac-10. At least this one team that looks awfully good. Here they come. White down the middle and broken up again by Justin Wyatt. How good a game has the junior out of Compton, California had? Well, that's what we said. Pete Carroll's defense, they say eight to stop the run and let those corners play football. Let the corners cover. Down and in. Jones runs around. Just doesn't just beat the corner right good enough. Bob and Brett, I like Pete Carroll's comment when we asked him about the cornerbacks and what he wanted. He said, well, what I want for my team is to turn tailback you and the cornerback you. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, there's been, it's been 23 years since a USC tailback led the Pac-10 in rushing. Second and 10. Keewon Jones, the inside handoff. Well, they got a couple. And as we approach eight minutes, it's going to be third down and long. Billy Sims had held the Oklahoma record for single season rushing until just moments ago. Adrian Peterson went past him over 1900 yards in a single season. And of course Billy won the Heisman Trophy. One of four Oklahoma players that has done so and I'm sure that young man who is runner up this year will have a great opportunity again next season. Third down and nine Sooners. Here comes USC again with a pressure. 
White got away from one guy. Now throws on the run, and he got it complete inside the 35 to Will Peoples. I think he was across the line of scrimmage. You're right, partner. I think there's a flag down. He had to scramble to his right. He broke a tackle and then threw on the run. Keith Rivers, the outside linebacker, was the guy applying the pressure. Here's the call. Holding number 55 on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat third down. That's just as bad. That's just as bad. Yeah. Al Brown, the right tackle, is called for holding. Tough night for Bob Stoops. When you see a, a flutter of life out of your offense, then you get a penalty and negates it. Dan Kodak can barely stand to watch. Matt Leinert says, I got to warm up. I want more. Third down now and 19. They're on a lot in the playbook for third and 19. We'll see how Jason White does in the shotgun. Three wide receivers to his left and one to his right. And here comes USC with a heat again. He's in trouble. And they're going to get him. And he goes. Patterson chased him. Tatupu tracked him down. Running time again for the Sooners. Jason White looking Jason up at the looking, scoreboard looking, replay. Looking back and say, let me see what happens. He's been banged around a little bit tonight. Two sacks, but knocked down several other times. Ferguson to punt. Reggie Bush has to call for a fair catch and takes it right at the 30-yard line. Six minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Still a lot of football left, but right now, all the excitement belongs to the Trojan fans and their team. Top-ranked USC, 45 to 10. Six thirty-five remaining in the third quarter, and the Trojans with a big lead and the ball back, leading 45 to 10 in the 71st. FedEx Orange Bowl, and now they can almost feel their fingers around that ADT championship trophy. And their 21-game winning streak right now isn't in a lot of danger. There's what they're playing for. They want to take that baby back to Southern California. Reggie Bush, Reggie Bush, Reggie Bush. Goodbye, no, he's tackled by Rodney Poole. What a tackle by the safety. I didn't think they were going to catch him. Rodney maybe didn't either, but great job diving effort just to get the shoestring clip on number five. Watch him blocking that offensive line. Latui number 71. Latua's 51. Poole just barely clips him. I didn't remember of all the tape we watched ever seeing him get caught from behind. And he had to time it perfect. Reggie's foot hit Rodney right in the face mask, and Rodney's saying, I'll take it. 73 yards on five carries for Reggie Bush. So he's had big plays. He just hadn't scored yet, but just about everybody else has. And look at that smile. That uh, tells the whole Dead story. Ball. Ball start, number 51 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Yesterday at the coach's luncheon, Swanee was talking to Reggie Bush, interviewing him, and Matt Leinart was sitting next to me and Jason White was sitting next to Bob and Matt Leiner kind of gave me one in the ribs and he leaned over and he rolled his eyes and he said whoa is he something special <laughs> and I thought this is a Heisman Trophy winner talking yeah. about his team well Leiner uh, Leiner won the Heisman but Reggie Bush was the team's MVP that's right first and 15 Matt back to throw again all day fires it out complete Dwayne Jarrett and Jaron and Smith having a field day as the two wide receivers when we expected Oklahoma's wide receivers to be the best core. But these two guys have really played well tonight. And Reggie Bush, we talked about how electrifying he can be in a variety of ways. We take a look with a spotlight on Reggie. Some of the things that make him special, he's bone rattling fast for one thing. He's got great moves. <laughs> Bone-breaking moves, I guess. <laughs> Ankle-breaking moves. <laughs> he can turn it on in a variety of 
different fashions. There's what he's done tonight so far. And here's the toss to him. On the corner. Whoops, he slipped and took himself down, or he might have had a little bit more daylight, too. And we're under five and a half minutes in the third quarter with Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and Todd Harris. Brad Nessler with you. It's the 71st FedEx Orange Bowl from Pro Players Stadium here in Florida. And it's been all Trojan since the opening drive of the ball game when the Sooners went 92 yards to yep. take a 7 to nothing lead and then turnovers started to kill them and USC has jumped on every turnover opportunity that the Sooners have afforded them and right now they're running away with the ball game 45 to 10 and they're running away with the BCS National Championship there's not going to be any argument if they keep this up about who's number one I know coach Tuberville was with us and, and bless his Auburn Tigers for their 13 and 0 record yeah. right, right and uh, last night the score probably was indicative of how lopsided that this is the number one team in the country has been since August it's January 4th of the following year they've won 21 straight <laughs> they've games they've won 21 straight games what are you going to do and let me let me let me just tell you take a good look at that offensive huddle there are only two seniors in that huddle 16 of the 22 starters on offense and defense for USC are back. USC might be a, a, a year away from, from having their best team. And that's a scary thought because Matt Leiner has told a lot of people, anybody that would pay attention and listen, that he plans, at least right now, to yeah. come back and play another year. Yeah, and I think he I think he will. I think he's one of those guys, an Eli Manning or a Peyton Manning, that enjoys being in college. Third down, inches, liner to throw. All day, lofts it to the end zone and overshot his intended receiver, Dwayne Jarrett. So that is going to bring out and bring up a fourth down call. Fourth down and inches. They were trying to get Reggie Bush down the sideline. It was kind of a wheel route. Jarrett was running to the middle, and Bush lined up in the backfield and just had enough speed to run down the sideline, but he was covered. Fourth down, Lendale White's got a first down. Inside the 25 to the 24, the big thunder part of thunder and lightning. Yeah, that ankles look awfully good now. Like you said, he had some time off, and he might not be in as good a shape yeah. as he would have been. But he couldn't he couldn't play play after play. He couldn't play 20, 30, 40 plays a game, but you spot him in there, and he's doing fine. So first down, Trojans keep it going. Reggie Bush is a true sophomore. Lindale White is a true sophomore. A little scary. Dwayne Jarrett, the, number eight, the wide receiver, is a true freshman. Steve Smith, who's caught two or three touchdowns tonight, a true sophomore. Play action, liner. Gonna throw it away. I want to bring in Todd because he spent more time around USC than we have this year. He and Keith and Fauci have seen him many, many times. And uh, all of us have spent some time recently with Matt Leinert. But uh, Todd, I know that uh, Matt's talked to you about next year. Well, you know, you're right. I saw him at the Orange Bowl luncheon the other day, and I said, Matt, you're going to come back to the Southland and play another year at Trojan? He says, yeah, right now it looks like that. I have no reason not to. He says, I love going to school. I love going to USC. And I'll tell you what, he is the king of L.A. right now. They love him down there. And I can't imagine you talking about how young USC is with Matt Leonard back next year. And, you know, they had the California All-Star game here the other day. A lot of those kids were uncommitted, and i got to think they're looking at the scoreboard thinking, USC might not be a bad place to go next year. Wouldn't that be unbelievable if yeah. two years in a row we had a Heisman Trophy winner come back when he didn't have to? Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I, I know one thing. If, if Matt Lyons decides to come back to Southern Cal, the only thing that will change will be the amount of the insurance policy <laughs> on his on that arm, left arm, legs, yeah. and everything else. <laughs> well, he always wasn't an outstanding athlete now, you guys. Remember when he was in the seventh grade, he was a little chubby. Yeah. Rudigood was a good uh, friend of his, the linebacker. And uh, he said, what, what, how did Rudigood put it? He said he was a, a chubby, a little chubby guy. A little chubby guy with glasses. glasses. Yeah. He, hit a, guy. he hit a gross spurt. He hit a so. gross spurt, yeah. Back to throw. Line it, lofts it near side. I don't know. Out of bounds. Got his hands on it. Let's check in with Todd again. Well, Brad, a lot of the credit for Reggie Bush goes to Norm Chow, 
maybe even Pete Carroll, but this is the lady that deserves all the credit. This is Denise Griffin, this is Reggie's mom, and uh, Mrs. Griffin, I see a big smile on your face. Yes, I'm having a good time, really proud of my son. It's an exciting time for all of us, and we're just enjoying ourselves right now here in Florida and at the game. Reggie's whole family's here. What was the mood of Reggie prior to this game? Did he have confidence coming in? Did he say, we're going to go out and make a statement? He didn't say anything like that, but he was very confident. We seen him last night just for a few moments, and he was just, he just said, Mom, I'll see you after the game. No problem. No problem. It was like no problem, no sweat. Lamar and Denise Griffin, and unfortunately for uh, opponents, there's another one coming. There's Joe Vaughn, Reggie's little brother, down there, and I hear he's not too bad. Brett? No problem on a 42-yard ride. Killeen field goal either. He's hit nine in a row now. He just tacked three more on with 4.01 to go. The Trojans 48 to 10 in the third quarter. The FedEx Orange Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive presentation brought to you by FedEx, proud sponsor of the BCS. Go air, go ground, go football. Blockbuster, come celebrate the end of late fees and the start of more. Chrysler, inspiration comes standard. And Allstate, are you in good hands? You're one of those Trojan cheerleaders. Your arms and elbows are getting tired. It's 48 to 10. That's a lot of push-ups. You know, both Reggie Bush, Matt Leiner, well-spoken young men. Yep. Very, uh, very easy to talk to. This kick finally returnable. Mark Bradley. Oh, what a hit. At about the 17-yard line. Ouch. Lee Webb on the special teams. Second time in a row he's made a big hit on a kick return. 3.54 remaining in the third quarter. A fired up bunch of Trojans. So is their coach. <laughs> They're having fun right now on the Trojan sideline. The devastating events that recently took place in Southern Asia have affected so many of us. And on the screen right now, you see a number and a website to contact in order to help the American Red Cross in their effort to assist. As you see, the flags and the tsunami disaster in honor of all those that lost their lives at half mast at Pro Player Stadium. And boy, I tell you what, puts uh, a football season in perspective. Oh, I don't think that. Just under four minutes left in the third quarter. Jason White, quick throw and low but complete to Mark Clayton. And hurry up offense for Oklahoma. They'd like to hurry up Adrian Peterson, 11 of his 12 games, 100 yards plus, not tonight. Reggie Bush, 12 and a half every time he's carried it and almost broke one for a score, but Adrian hasn't been able to get on track. Well, that's that's Pete Carroll's defense. Yes, that's it is. Shut down the running game, and he has done that tonight. And he's done it again. Or his players have, I should say. Tell you what, Manuel Wright, the sophomore, 6'6", 290, out of Compton, California, has had a big game. And it's Cody and Patterson normally we're talking about on the inside, but number 92 has really played well. well right, right, number 92 was right there with Lindale White as far as having an ankle sprain and not knowing whether he was going to play. He had a lot of rest, too. Maybe you ought to give these guys more rest. <laughs> Come out here and play like this. And fresh legs. Peterson trying to break a tackle. Got a first down. Eric Wright made the stop. You know, you talk about SC's defense, and you go back to Matt Grudegood. He said when Pete Carroll first came, he walked into the defensive room, and he says you could see in his first speech the energy, the enthusiasm, and the passion that he had for defense. He says, he sold me right there on his style and his play of defense. He said, we bought into it in a hurry. Here's White, out complete. Brandon Jones, short of a first down. Jason Leach made the stop. And, and again, that, Oklahoma trying to just change the, the whole buzz here and try to get up to the line. They, they need to now. There's only two and a half minutes left in the and third And that quarter. style of defense, Brad, is first of all, stop the run. We want to stop the run. Secondly, don't give up any deep play, any deep throws, big plays. 
And thirdly, takeaways. Get after takeaways and have some fun playing defense. Comes a blitz again. White hangs in, though, and completes it across the middle to Travis Wilson. And Travis has a first down out near midfield, about the 48-yard line. Grudegood, the guy that put a big hit on Jason White again. Thursday night on ESPN, the PGA Tours 2005 season begins. P.J. Singh, Tiger Woods, and the rest of the field go to Maui for a prime time showdown at the Mercedes Championships. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Peterson still working at it. And he picked up about five. So Adrian Peterson starting a little bit now to put some numbers together. 76 yards, but it's taken him 23 carries. Yeah. The longest run tonight has only they, been 12 yards. They knew they would have to be patient with their running game. They knew they were going up against a strong defense against the run. Second and five over the middle incompletes. And a nice play by Darnell Bing, though the ball was thrown behind Bubba Moses, the tight end. We talked about all the players coming back on this SC team. 16 of the 22 starters. It's just the opposite for Oklahoma. This may be their last best chance at a national title because they lose 16 seniors. Eight on offense, seven on defense, and they lose their punter. So they're going to have to redo this whole team, including their quarterback. Third down and five. Sneaking up, thinking about a blitz. Here come the Trojans. White throws high, almost intercepted again. Mark Clayton, the intended receiver. Jason Leach was looking for the ricochet. And it's fourth down. Well, they, there's no punting in this one. They got to go for it. Only going to get their hands on it so many more times. Jason White, you know he's a frustrated senior here. I mean, it's, you're you're across the 50. If you were backed up in your own territory, obviously you'd have to kick it away. But fourth and about what? Five or six to go. Yep. This time USC doesn't blitz. White throws. And Keywan Jones looks like he's short by that much. And Bob Stoops is trying to help him. Trying to help him. Trying to get a couple, couple more football lengths, but he's not going to. And it's going to be, they will bring the chain gang to look at it. But it looks like it's going to be going back over to the Trojans on downs. Yeah, those coaches over there, they know. And it is two lengths of the football short. USC will take over. Take a look from the blimp. This will make you dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> from Stars and Stripes. This is how Shaquille sees it. Oh, Shaq. <laughs> yeah, Shaq was our coin toss guy tonight. He didn't fl he didn't flip it up in the air, just dropped it, and it was still higher than most referees yeah. throw it. E. Carroll knows already, a minute nine to go, that that ADT championship trophy is going to be in his mitts pretty soon, and they will have after having shared the national title a year ago, have it all to their lonesome this yeah, year. The guy that picked that up and waved it last year was in the house tonight. Yes, he was. Nick Saban. New head coach of the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. Here's a counter. At least Lindell White makes it a counter on his own. And he gets across the 45 out to about 47. With this dramatic a score, even though Auburn went 13 and 0, and a perfect season for them. And Coach Tubblegirl was with the guys on the halftime show. I don't think anybody's going to argue with USC being the national champ. I, I think, you know, I thought these two teams were pretty close coming in, and I thought they had the right two teams. I think Oklahoma just came up with a with a with a real dud here those, tonight. Those two turnovers. The first two, I should say, just take, took all the momentum away. It was an easy touchdown on one after Mark Bradley decided he wanted to try to field a punt because he thought a USC player had touched it. And, and that was the beginning of the unraveling. Yeah, but, but who forced that, Brad? I mean, Oklahoma just doesn't come out and make those on themselves. Right. 
SC had a lot of pressure on them on offense and defense, even the opening drive that Oklahoma went down and scored offensively. I mean, SC defense, it was coming after them, and they hit some plays on that, and that was the best drive of the whole ball game for Oklahoma. They, didn't, they, haven't, they haven't played that well since. Substitution infraction on the offense, breaking the huddle with 12 men, five-yard penalty, third down. So... Boomer and Sooner and the Sooner Scooter. They might be, they might be heading to the tunnel. <laughs> They're heading back for their feet. They're going home. 20 years ago, they got penalized, remember? Yeah, I do. The Orange Bowl. The old Orange Bowl. It was Danny Bradley, Mark Bradley's dad, the quarterback for Oklahoma in that game. And Oklahoma was going to take a lead on a field goal in the second half. And there was a penalty for illegal procedure. And the Sooner Scooter went out on the field. And then they threw another flag, 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on those two little poor ponies. Yeah. And the next field goal was blocked. Yeah. And Barry Spitzer says, we didn't know there was any rules against the, we, we, you know, the scooter comes out on our field all the time. <laughs> but now it's in the rule book. It is in the rule it's book. It's in the manual, the Orange Bowl manual for this game, page 73 to 75. They've told all these horses what they can and can't do tonight. Right now, the horses are the Trojans, and it's no wooden horse, I'm telling you. It's very well alive at the end of three quarters. Playing for the national championship and well in hand. 48 to 10, the fourth quarter they think belongs to them. We'll find out. Our presentation of the FedEx Orange Bowl will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Just about set for the fourth quarter and during our commercial break, Mickey Mouse finally revealed his big surprise. Let's take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please welcome everyone's pal, the one and only Mickey Mouse. In honor of the 50th anniversary of Disneyland Park, Mickey has a special surprise for each and every ticket holder at today's game. He wants to give each of you a complimentary ticket good for one visit to any Disney theme park worldwide. You just received a ticket to the biggest celebration in Disney history. What are you going to do next? Sounds like fun about now. Yeah, why are we over there? <laughs> the spectacular 50th anniversary celebration starts May 5th at all Disney theme parks worldwide. 48 to 10 as we head into the fourth and final quarter of the college football season. And right now, the top-ranked team in the country looks all of that and then some. It's the first three and out for USC all night. Malone to punt. Keeping it away from Antonio Perkins. That's about this right spot. over in that yep. corner. Yeah, same, same <laughs> bad, corner. I got bad vibes of the ball bouncing around over there. So he dropped it in there, and this time it's not fumbled away because nobody touched it. ABC's Wild Card Saturday starts with great regional action in the NBA. First, you'll see either the Knicks against LeBron and the Cavaliers, or the Nuggets take on the Spurs. That's Saturday at 1 Eastern, right here on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. Check the local listings for the game in your area. Then don't forget. The NFL playoffs kick off. Wild card doubleheader. Rams in Seattle. Trying to get the Seahawks for the third time this year. And the Jets in San Diego. 8 o'clock Eastern is game two. NFL wild card Saturday. Coverage starts at 4 Eastern following the NBA on ABC. That's a, a lot of good sports. NBA and NFL Saturday on ABC. Here's a pass complete out. Wow. Travis Wilson. To bring up second down and about six. First possession was picture perfect. 92 yards and a touchdown in 12 plays, just under six minutes. It was white to Travis Wilson for a touchdown, but in the last eight possessions, nothing but one field goal. Travis Wilson again trying to wheel around and get to the first down sticks, and he's going to be a little bit short, about a yard short. Third down and one coming up. Lofa Tatupu in on another tackle, and the last time we checked, he had 11 tackles. What a night he has had. Yeah, he'll be back. He's just a junior. His first name officially is Mosi Ula, which is his dad's name. His middle name is Mia Lofa Tatupu, and he's taken the middle name and put and making a name for himself. He's not just Mos Mosi's little boy anymore. Yeah, he's grown up. He's going to have his own ring. Yep. 
<laughs> Jason White to throw. Got it out to his tight end, Bubba Moses. Mosi Tatupu, the special teams player of the year, named after his dad, who had some great career with the New England Patriots. But Mosi Tatupu tonight, he has been all over the place. I know his dad's proud of him. We talked about the fact won a conference crown with Maine in Division One AA when he was a freshman before transferring. He gave that ring to his mom, and then he gave the ring from last year, share of the national championship to his dad. He says, you know, my sisters do some jewelry pretty soon. She might get the best ring of them all. Yeah. She'll get this one. They may get another one next year, the way this team that, is, y'all. Yeah. 12 tackles tonight. And out to the 49, a first down. Manny Wright comes off to be a little bit shaken up having a great game on the defensive line for USC comes to the sideline first and 10 13 minutes to play Jason White trying to hurry things up trying to get some kind of offense going throws down the middle it's intercepted this one by Matt Grudega and one of the defensive captains and one of the stars of that linebacking core has yet another turnover Grudega makes his fifth interception of the year and the third interception of the night suffered by Jason White, having another BCS nightmare. ABC Sports coverage of the FedEx Orange Bowl continues. The 71st FedEx Orange Bowl. Great job that the Orange Bowl committee did putting on this BCS national championship game. Both teams have had a lot of fun. In their time down here, it's just no fun right now if you're a Sooner or a Sooner fan, and it's jubilation time if you're a Trojan or a fan of the University of Southern California. Matt Lonnett, the Heisman Trophy winner, has had a record-breaking night. Five touchdown passes is a new Orange Bowl record. He gives it off to Lendell White, and White into the secondary. Lendell off to the races inside the third. Down to the 20 and down to the 17-yard line. And the rich get richer. It's a nice job up front of that offensive line. We mentioned it. We thought this might be a little bit of a soft spot. But Baker and Drake and Khalil and Matua and Latui up front. And Lindale White says, give me some time off, and I'll come back and run strong for you. Greasy's over 100 yards, and that's the 18th play of 10 yards or longer tonight for USC. Wow. That's something. He stays in there as a tailback in the eye. On a first down, he'll get the call again. Lendale broke one tackle, got inside the 15 to the 14. Rufus Alexander made the stop. Three hundred and twenty four yards passing for Matt Leonard. Lindell White over 100 yards rushing. Steve Smith and Dwayne Jarrett both over 100 yards receiving. You do it like that, you're not yeah. going to lose. You know, and, and being around SC, you know, Keith and Dan and those guys do the games mostly out there, but we did one game this year. We went out and saw some practices being around. Pete Carroll and Norm Chow, Lane Kiffin and uh, Ed Orgeron and some of the guys. They, they, they really do that right. The kids are well behaved, they're well disciplined, and I was very impressed with the whole situation. I mean, uh, first class operation all the way. And it might be the beginning of a, a dynasty, really, when you think of sharing a title last year. Pete, just his fourth year. He's going to be 42 and 9 when this one's over. He's the 53 year young head coach who has more fun. You know, we're. <laughs> Before the game, at the end of practice, the walkthrough yesterday, he must have thrown passes for 20 minutes. Oh, he loves it. Before the game tonight, he did it for yeah. probably a half an hour. It's just funny to watch a head coach throwing the football around. I walked over to him and I said, you don't have a bad arm for an old broken down defensive back. And he said, Ness, I'm still working on it. I said, you, so were you a quarterback? He says, it's a wannabe quarterback. <laughs> Lindell White. 
down to about the eight yard line a yard short of the first down but you talk about somebody that didn't hit it off in the NFL uh, fired by the Jets fired by the Patriots was out of football for a year you know Mike Garrett tried to hire Dennis Erickson for this job he didn't want it tried to hire Mike Riley for the job he didn't want it tried to hire Bilotti the two coaches at the Oregon schools Oregon and Oregon State both turned down the job at USC before it was offered to uh, Pete Carroll. And, 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 the, and, and as they say, the rest is history. That's right. Fourth and short. Lindale White's got the short. He might have the touchdown. Going to be a celebration penalty. I don't think they care. <laughs> Matua even spiked it. They, <laughs> they might get a couple <laughs> celebration penalties. I don't know. Uh, Lendale White from eight yards out for the touchdown. It just keeps piling up right now for USC. Fifty-four to ten with the extra point coming up. There's Thunder doing it again over 100 yards and a touchdown. I just wonder when he could have practiced. How much sooner think, he could have practiced. I think he stayed out of practice so he could get more interviews. I think I think he was just <laughs> playing that ankle along. I think you're right. Huh? A little bit of sandbag. Look at the coach saying, now, don't you don't you come next year and say, hey, my ankle hurts. <laughs> hey, coach, I'll be ready for the game. You got to work like the rest of those guys are working. Uh, here's going to be the uh, penalty on the celebration, I'm sure. Steve Shaw, our referee tonight. These guys from the SEC done a nice job. Yes, they have. After the play, there were two fouls. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 21 on the offense. Unsportsmanlike conduct. <laughs> Number 51 on the offense. I told Both you. Both fouls will be enforced <laughs> on the kickoff. That's going to be a pretty deep kick. Glendale <laughs> <laughs> was first Grandma, with the Mary, dance. At the house. Wax Joe. Can't believe you. I see you. What's up, baby? Uncle Herm, what up, baby? Can we get this to the background? We'll get the background. Yeah. Quite a night. Over a thousand yard night, over a hundred yards in the single game tonight. And the extra point by Ryan Colleen is good. 946. A happy Heisman Trophy winner. We've got folks watching from all over the country, and we welcome them wherever they might be. Hi, I'm Lance Corporal Eddie Travis here from 3 1 Weapons Company. I want to give a shout out to USC. Go Trojans! Yeah! The FedEx Orange Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive presentation brought to you by FedEx, proud sponsor of the BCS. Go Air, Go Ground, Go Football. The next Ford F-150, built Ford Tough. Thank you from City, a new kind of rewards program from a card you can count on. And Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. A happy USC band. Our FedEx Express passing yards and ground yardage tonight. Passing yardage USC 332. 100 more than Oklahoma. And the FedEx ground stats USC 185. Oklahoma Adrian Peterson and company have not been able to get on track. That was the main goal of the defense of Pete Carroll and his Trojans. Stop Adrian Peterson. If we can <laughs> cut that off, we can force last year's Heisman Trophy Look, winner to what? throw, and they have him. They've intercepted him three times. Here's the kick. Look at this. They're from kicking the, it from the from ten, the 10 yard line. They're kicking off from the 10 yard line because of the two unsportsmanlike contacts. Look where Travis Wilson and Mark Bradley are there on the bottom of your screen. They're about at the 35 yard line here's the one hopper and Bradley will take it at about the 31 Bradley into USC territory it's going to be probably the best starting field position that they've had all night it's too bad it's when they're down 55 to 10 our Nokia team comparison statistics uh, statistically everything in the favor of the Trojans you can see over that's the big yeah one. that's the bad one the that's five the turnovers is what really turned this ball game around Obviously, 31 points off those turnovers, so 
You know, that's why coaches talk about it all the time. It's boring to hear it, but it is so true, and you've seen it here tonight. My dad, Stevie T, what up? Those total yard statistics were not correct. USC's got over 500 yards tonight in total offense. Peterson on the carry. Ronald Nunn brought him down. Adrian Peterson doesn't look like he's going to hit his century mark as he did 11 times out of 12 games this year. But uh, the future bright for him, obviously, and Norman. Just nine minutes away, and the ADT Championship trophy will be in the hands of USC to take back to the West Coast. Hey, the second year in a row that Pete Carroll and the Trojans have gotten at least a share of it. This time it'll be all theirs. Peterson got four more. This is Pete's, what do you say, fourth year right. and his second national championship back to back now that they can claim. Speaking of Pete, there's Rodney Pete, former USC quarterback. Going to be a lot of celebrating going on. Sean Salisbury, we saw him down, our ESPN colleague, former Trojan before uh, the ball game. Paul McDonald, who uh, works the radio broadcast for USC, another the left-hander, another former USC quarterback. So a lot of those guys uh, will be celebrating. They all have big smiles on their faces. Here's a quick screen, and that's all blown up by Darnell Bing. Yeah. See, all the Trojans are making the plays, and the Clayton and all of the receivers for Oklahoma are standing around. It just, it just, who came to play tonight and who, who, who did? Bob Stoops, who won a national title in just his second year, now in his sixth season, he'll drop to 67 and 12, and this will be the first time they've lost all season long. And their motto this year was to finish. And they're going to finish the season, unfortunately, for the Sooner fans with another setback in a BCS National Championship game. Yeah, this is this is Bob Stoops' third appearance in a National Championship game in the last five years. They only won it once, but they've been in it the last two years and didn't win it. And now they're going to say, and they call touchback or say that that ball went out at the one-yard line. It looks like it's out at the one. Wow. Reggie Bush and the rest of the Trojans in command. They have been really since the opening touchdown drive of the night. The trophy will be there shortly. Ford in unprecedented six new vehicles right here, right now. Ford built for the road ahead. You look in from Stars and Stripes at Top Pro Player Stadium. Tracy Rockhold, our captain, giving us a great shots all night. All our aerial coverage courtesy of Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and Captain thanks for all the great pictures safe travels the rest of the night and on your way back home. USC at its own one yard line. And then about a yard pickup for Desmond Reed. Let's check in with Lynn Swan. Well guys uh, one of the very top of administrators for USC and the associate athletic director there in the Bergen shirt is Dr. Daryl Gross. Now he is going to be the new athletic director for Syracuse University. And what a lot of people didn't understand or knew about the fact that Pete Carroll became the head coach at USC is that Daryl actually went out, saw Pete Carroll, and recruited him to USC. Mike Garrett signed him, but he went out and said, this is the kind of guy I think can be a good head coach at the University of Southern California. And he told me just this evening, and that's close to being a safety. It is. It is. And it is. That's one way for Oklahoma to get a few points. I guess so. But just to finish it up, he said, as the athletic director for Syracuse, he's going to go out and try and replicate what he did at Southern California. Find another defensive coordinator slash college head coach, NFL head coach kind of person. He said he's got about four or five people in mind, but he says he wants Syracuse to come back in football and dominate. Well, that'll be the last night he'll be wearing a Cardinal golf shirt. Carson Palmer behind him. As he'll be the new athletic director at Syracuse. He'll be wearing Syracuse orange. Safety has made it. 55 to 12. I think there's probably a penalty on Matt Line or two for spiking the football in disgust. We'll find out all about that when we come back. The ADT 
Championship Trophy was the goal of both teams tonight. And while Oklahoma took a touchdown lead after that, it was all top-ranked Trojans throughout the game. Frustration on the part of the Sooner defenders. They couldn't stop the stars like Reggie Bush, Dwayne Jarrett, Steve Smith, and especially Matt Liner to the big smile of head coach Pete Carroll. His team en route to the BCS National Championship with six and a half minutes remaining in the ball game. Back live at Pro Players Stadium, Matt Leinert. About the only thing he's been disgusted with tonight is <laughs> he was just uh, knocked down for a safety first because mistake of the night of a bad mishandle in the backfield in the end zone. So now the free kick coming up. And the punt goes to the 33 to Brandon Jones. And Brandon gets back across midfield to about the 49 of the Trojans. Stronger than a screaming brat and more powerful than a terrible toddler. It's Super Nanny. She's helping parents and saving the world one family at a time. Super Nanny premieres Monday, January 17th at 10, 9 Central, only on ABC. Uh, how's our NYPD Blue? Is that... Uh, yeah, we'll get back to that I next think, week because we took their time slots. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. In its final season, Dennis Franz, uh, Sipowitz, uh -huh. and our favorite... I don't know what Bob and I are going to do, quite frankly, on Tuesday night starting Tuesday next nights year. at 10, I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe we just should go to sleep. We're getting old. They don't have some reruns. Well, yeah, they'll have a good show in that slot sometime, I'm sure, after it's over. Jason White to throw out Travis Wilson. And Travis out of bounds, two or three yards shy of the first down, a pickup of seven. As we're down to just a little over six minutes remaining in the ballgame. you got to feel bad for Jason White. The main reason that he came back this year after winning a Heisman Trophy, though a lot of people don't anticipating him as being a high draft choice at a quarterback spot in the National Football League. But he said, I didn't want that sour taste in my mouth from the Big 12 championship game last year and then the BCS title game in the Sugar Bowl and the loss to LSU because he threw four interceptions in those two games and no touchdowns. And he felt like he let his teammates and the Sooner fans down, so he came back sixth year of eligibility because of the medical hardship of having knee surgery twice and came back and he was so excited as you said you don't get many chances to have a, a mulligan and uh, yeah. he had it tonight and he hit it out of bounds unfortunately yeah. but he's not the only one no he had a, he, he had a do-over and he came in tonight and and, and and they didn't get it done last year the defense was LSU Nick Saban's defense they were really good the corners were NFL type yeah. corners and tonight they really felt like they could throw on these corners. Wyatt on one side and Wright on the other, and they have not. And here's some open field now and down the sideline inside the 10 is DJ Wolf, the freshman. And getting a little play in time and a nice run. That's a that's the best run of the night for Oklahoma. Yeah. Thomas knocked him out. So first with the safety and now with what might be a touchdown coming up, you, you take away a little bit of the difference on the scoreboard, but uh, it's not going to be that way. Even if they score a touchdown, it's not going to matter. Well, SC's got their uh, backups, their second string defensive line, and the defensive, uh, the whole secondary and defensive line in there. Out of the gun. At the 12 yard line of Jason White. Handoff. Wolf again. Oh, man. Took a couple hits that time. And very little gain, if any, on the play. As we work our way down, they're starting to unbox those BCS National Championship FedEx Orange Bowl title t shirts. You know, this, this SC team is going to be strong. And, I, you know, I, I can't see. They lose one coach. Ed Argeron is going to Mississippi as the head coach. But right. they, as long as they have Pete Carroll being the head coach and defensive coordinator and Norm Chow running the offense and that great supply of talent and recruiting out of the state of California, I don't see... I don't see this going down. There's our head over yeah, We wish him luck with his new head coaching job yeah, at the SEC. He was, he was a coach here at uh, University of Miami for a number of years. Had a couple of uh, championship rings with Miami. Johnny Norton Jr., who Shaq talked about a little while ago, just came into your picture. Great linebacker in his own right in the professional ranks. Good coaching staff. They have a lot of fun. They work hard, and it's all paid off for them, hasn't it? It really does. It really does. Uh, they have fun. 
Reynolds goes out in motion to fullback. Jason White to the end zone. Touchdown, Travis Wilson. Good for Travis. He stuck in there. He's made a lot of catches tonight. And he gets in the end zone, and it just makes the score look a little more uh, not so hard to look at, I guess you should well, say, for the Sooners. Uh, doesn't no matter what the score is, Bob Stoops, uh, it hasn't been a pleasant night for him. But, uh, you know, it's tough. You, uh, you win games during the season, and you come up and you lose the championship game last year. You come back and you do everything right this year. You win the Big 12 championship. You go through the, the Big 12. Uh, and here you come in against. There's yeah. no question in my mind that USC is the best team in the nation. And Mike Garrett, the athletic director, hugging his head coach and going back just to make sure to hug him again. And we'll be back. Jubilation on the Trojan sideline. They're just four minutes away from handling that ADT championship trophy. Watching the FedEx Orange Bowl on ABC Sports. She can be anyone. Now she gets to be herself. Golden Globe nominee Jennifer Garner stars in a new season of Alias. The two-hour premiere event begins tomorrow at 9, 8 Central, only on ABC. <laughs> Matt Leinert, the Heisman Trophy winner, looked all the part tonight. Yeah, I vote for him. Yeah, five touchdown passes. Uh, Orange Bowl record, 332 yards. All that, all that nonsense about the Heisman Trophy winner can't win. Yeah, the jinx thing. Bowl game can't Forget win it. the national championship. He put that aside, didn't he? He sure did. And, and didn't Larry Burdon from uh, Oklahoma say he was overrated? <laughs> I think he must have been just kidding. Right? Yeah, I think he was too. Well, there's no kidding around about this team. They're that good. And tonight they were better than good. Trey DiCarlo will kick the good hands team for USC. They've got everybody within 20 yards of the upcoming kick. And they're going to kick away. And it goes out of bounds. That's just a microcosm of how things have gone tonight. She <laughs> whiz. Well, Swanee touched on Verdine's quote about Matt Leonard. He's a Heisman Trophy winner, but he hasn't been driving them or he hasn't been winning games up until the last four or five games. Reggie Bush has been their difference and playmaker, and he said <laughs> that Matt was overrated. Well, I don't know. Five touchdown passes tonight gives Matt Leonard 33 for the year, and it gives him 71 for his career. And I heard Aaron Taylor ask Carson Palmer at halftime, what do you think about him coming back and breaking your record? Boy, you know, I know the San Francisco 49ers are going to get the number one draft choice, and they'd probably like to keep that kid in California if he wanted to be a quarterback. But I sure like to see him come back next year. I'll tell you that much. Well, who do you think is going to be ranked number one at the beginning of the year? Uh, I'd say maybe this team, <laughs> whether Matt Leinart's there or not. Yeah. And, and oh, by the way, if he's not, they, uh, the, the back, uh, two backups, Castle and Brandon Hans, are both fifth-year seniors, so they're graduating. If Leinart leaves, it goes back down to Booty. David Maybe. John, John David Booty. Yep. Would be the, and they've got a uh, new uh, freshman coming in. I think they they're happy about. So they got all kinds of talent. And they're getting ready to get their coach wet too in the last three and a half minutes. And Pete's having a great time over there, and why not? He's an excitable coach. The players just love being around him. He makes. Even the drudgery of practice fun, and nobody has more fun, I don't think, than him. And uh, boy, this is this is a night to have fun, that's for sure. As we're down to three minutes, Todd. Well, you talk about how fun it is to be around Pete Carroll. He's got an infectious attitude. His players love him, but you might say he's crazy like a fox. During the middle of summer, the dog days of two days, Pete Carroll decides to shake things up, which he's known to do in practice a lot of times. So he walks across the street to the aquatic center at USC. Says everyone's going to jump off. I'll go first. And that's no small jump. <laughs> Crazy like a fox indeed. Yep, no doubt. And he knows that water's coming too. <laughs> but somebody's going to come up and grab and hold him until he and let the Drake and the other guys that hit him with the water. And run on third down. I want to thank all the folks as you're getting ready to see Pete get wet. Our job so much fun and give us so much help. That's actually Coach Argent that got yeah. doused. Because he's leaving. They got him. 
And the top spotter in the country is a man to my right, my good friend Clint Deans, the number one statistician in the world is PTR, Patrick McGrath. Our production manager is Jenny McIver. Joe Kirikone our tech manager, our stage manager, Mike Locker, and Jimmy Hatter joined us tonight. Our score bug operators, Paul Barnes, computer graphics by Anthony Holman and Mark Amento. Kay Schumacher with her magical fingers bringing us a lot of those graphics. The assistance of the producer, Tom Wicks. Julie Norman, who took better care of us than we deserve this year. And Joe Zuko. Our associate director is Dick Ellis. Associate producers, Matt Marvin and Derek Mobley. Here's a punt. Letting this one go, which is something they should have done earlier in the ball game. And it's going to be a touchback. Our technical director is Brad Rowe. Our game tonight directed by Patty Mack, Patrick McManus, and our game produced by Bruce Clark, the coordinating producer of college football who joined us tonight. Good to have him with us, Bob Goodrich. Senior producer is Bob Times. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Mike Pearl. And the president of ABC Sports and ESPN is George Bodenheimer. These are all the folks that have been with us all year. And while one coach got wet, Pete says, I'm okay. No, I'm not okay. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. The celebration is 92 seconds away. And we want to congratulate the teams that made it through undefeated. Utah. Urban Meyer now will move to Florida. Coach Tuberville in Auburn. I got a lot of friends that are Auburn fans and alum. They're going to be 13 and 0, but they're going to be number two, I think, because this 13 and 0 USC team has just been too good tonight. I think to change anybody having a vote to change, I'm sure. I think back over the years to the teams that went undefeated, that didn't win national championships. I think of Penn State. They did a couple of three times, yeah, three I think. Times. In '73, they were undefeated. You know, Joe Paul. He won it a couple of times, but he, there was three other times he went undefeated and didn't win a national championship. And on the other side, Dan Cody trying to help some of the younger guys and say, you know what, we did pretty well. We went 12 and 1. We won the Big 12 championship. We got back to the title game. It just wasn't enough tonight. And you know, our hats are off to Bob Stoops and his staff too to get here, to go 12 and 0, to get to a national championship. It takes so much work and. So much blood and guts. But oh, tonight, right, get on uh, that red eye. USC is going to be the team that's going to come out on top. Now, Tommy Tuberville, big congratulations to him and, and his Auburn Tigers and the way Tommy has carried himself and handled this whole situation with class. And Jason White, thanks for coming back after your Heisman Trophy last year. We've appreciated seeing you one more season in college football, and the best of luck to you and your girlfriend and your baby daughter on whatever the future might hold in professional football or whatever else comes after that. So a dominating performance by USC. Their band just ready to light it up here pretty soon. And everybody set to head out on the field. They couldn't get enough hands in there to get those national championship caps out of that box and those T-shirts out of that box. Pretty soon they'll all be down there with Swanee to hoist the 71st FedEx Orange Bowl trophy. Your BCS national champions, the Trojans of USC, a perfect season at 13-0, and let the celebration for the University of Southern California begin. champions here at the FedEx Orange Bowl 55 points on the board 55 to 19 top ranked USC over number two Oklahoma last year they had to share the title this year they're not going to share it with anybody comes back maybe even if he doesn't come back this might be a Trojan dynasty that's going to last a long time they've won 22 straight well they've won 33 out of the last 34 since Matt Leiner took over at quarterback USC 
USC, a big winner tonight to win the BCS National Championship and the ADT Championship Trophy that goes with it. We'll join John Craig and Aaron and Lynn Swan with a presentation of that National Championship Trophy when we come back in a moment.